do do do. Right, so, big components. Um, I did the blurb when I first streamed this, but uh, as a reminder, I got a copy of this game for streaming purposes. It's also... <laughs> I want to say it's also on Game Pass. That does not seem necessarily correct. It is on Game Pass. I'm correct. Okay, cool. This is a cute little storybook game, um, which we played back in October. Because it was kind of spooky. We did a spooky week. We did a couple of sessions. Um, Okay, we also did it in September as well. So end of September and end of October. Um, we did two streams. And I'm kind of hoping that I'm in a good position to finish off the story. I originally wasn't going to do more than one <laughs> stream of this. <laughs> but it's really good. And people requested it. Um, in fact, everyone that voted, voted for this. So that's why this is being the stream today. Um... Yeah, so basically it's kind of like, well, let's go into the storybook itself. Hello everyone. Um, I was just admiring my hair in the mirror earlier. He my looked up with surprise as it struck true and taut. Okay, so yeah. Um... This is a story where we get we we find actions and then the actions determine the story. And um we have multiple options. We're somewhere around about flight, by the way, because that has the question mark. That's how I know where we are. Um so From what I remember, so basically our dad died in the same disaster that like basically crippled the town we live in. Our mum disappeared. I'm putting things in quotes because I'm fairly certain our dad is dead. I'm not certain our mum is missing um, because we're being looked after by our gran. But, in the last stream, I remember in the library, we found an obituary for our gran. And, in one of the story arcs, we found this radioactive goo that prematurely ages you. So I'm thinking gran is actually mum. Pretending to be gran, because how else do you explain that you're suddenly, you know, twice your age? So, this this um, initial story choice makes no difference. But I went back and I changed. I tried, chose them all just to see. It just changes a sentence. This one, basically, Roxy is our friend's sister. We can either be a little shite or have a chill interaction. One of them involves us then going off on our own because our friend had to do chores. Um. We either die, here this is an ending, um, or we manage to escape from the creature in here. We then have 
an interaction with we, we find a new friend and then we have a whole weather interaction um, if we shelter from the storm um, we fall out with our best friend because he's like you abandoned me and we were like no we were sheltering from the storm um, and eventually it just ends because the town freezes over even after we have made up with our friend again if we if the weather breaks um, we go to our friend and then the three of us um, try and discover what's going on. We suspect Gran and some of the other people in the town. Um, there are three methods of investigation here. Two of them basically result in it not working. We either get trapped in the basement or, you know, end up uh something or other i can't remember whether that's just it ends up with the town freezing um and then the third one i can't remember which one of the three works um means that we get information and then what happens is we end up following gran and the guy that owns the convenience store oh um, one of them may be we accidentally had drugged jam <laughs> because Gran was drugging this guy. I don't know. Anyway, we end up on like the... I don't know. We go through a series of tubes and end up in like an alternate reality where everything... where there's a big pit and Gran accidentally dropped... well, purposefully drops stuff down trying to sabotage it. But this is what has been happening. This is why we keep on getting endings where everything freezes. So we didn't have an option and we again froze. But at least we found out what was going on. Um, at that point we got another interaction. So yeah, this side is what happens if we end up going with our friend to explore the strange factory. And then what happens is our friend actually goes missing and then we meet up with our new friend old friend and new friend i've forgotten all their names so just gonna be friend for now um and then we meet the bullies at a tree stump with some liquidy stuff what happens is it, it then splits off into two things so one of them is if we like don't interact and the bully doesn't get pushed into the goo um something happens and then we found out that our friend was abandoned and yeah we get we basically this this guy here with a tail is the convenience store owner and i'm fairly certain we end up getting trapped with our friend there's a whole thing with the radio going off and stuff but if we do fight the bully or act really strange or tick i can't remember which one causes it but basically the bully gets splashed with this goo so then the bully becomes this weird half old, half young monster for better want of a better word. Um, we end up going back to our treehouse and then we get surrounded by all the clones from this produce company that's taken over the town that clearly something's dodgy's going on. We fight and get surrounded and that's I believe an ending I know that didn't succeed we're currently in flight because we've gone back there and we're trying to get us we're trying to escape we're still trying to rescue our friend our friend I think said basically don't go back to the treehouse but the radio connection was bad but our friend is trapped somewhere underground probably in the same tunnels that we used to get here um so that is a summary from what I remember um there's definitely some sort of conspiracy with I think that's the greengrocer, our, our gran, and uh, the lady that owns the Italian restaurant. Um, I think they're technically supposed to be the good guys. They're basically the resistance. The mayor doesn't really want to be the mayor. His dad was the one that died with our dad. There's a whole posh family. There's a whole, like, adopted son thing going on. Um... And yeah, it's a little bit confusing. Hi, Leaky. 
Um, so, yeah. He looked up with surprise as it struck true and taut. <gasps> wow. Oh, yeah. So this is us. I don't remember our name. Um, Rolo is our friend, though. Um, so... We, yeah, so basically we investigated the Valent Valentine family, is the family where the mayor is. Um, and yeah, we're trying to find our friend Rolo. Um, these are currently all the things we have right now. At some point we need to go back and see if we can do some more fishing with some of our actions. Um, we've picked up as many as we can. Basically you just investigate things and speak to people and you get these. Um, you can go back and replay parts. Luca! Thanks, Leaky. How come you remember his name? Okay, so we're Luca. We have a friend, Rolo. Um, and yeah. This other person on the top of the treehouse with us is a, is our bully. Is a bully. Um, and yeah. The, the, the hyena guy is like in charge of... Um, he's like the president of this GMO company that bought the valentines out effectively it's taking over the town and well obviously the guys with the clipboards are clones because there's like 10 of them and they all look the same and yeah that's weird so yeah we fought the first time we did not succeed now we're trying flight um i feel like uh, tend and befriend also <laughs> probably wouldn't work. This freeze, which probably wouldn't work as options. So fight or flight, I feel like is, you know, here uh, a reasonable solution. Um, I think we basically just dropped into that at the end of the last stream and said we'll pick it up here. Uh, hi, have all. Um, so yeah, so I'm not quite sure which is the true branch. I feel like there's possibly going to be another option there that maybe does involve us accidentally freezing the town. Or m maybe this gives us some more information and this possibly has a branch which goes up. But as you can see, we're still missing a good chunk of tree. Um, so I guess we will see I, where this goes. We started slightly earlier. Not as early as I was planning to start, but hey... I was finishing off food and stuff and, you know, we will do a either afternoon or early evening stream just to finish off AI tomorrow, but that'll be our only stream because other people we know stream Fridays. Um, and yeah, and then um, need to decide what to do Saturday in our normal stream slots and then if we're doing a New Year's Eve co-streamy type thing and then Sunday we'll probably be trying to finish off Aquadine's mermaid story and probably calling it a day on Aquadine there um, I will find out obviously what happens in the other two storylines offline to see whether I was right or not also did I say hi Hevor? I said it in my head I don't know whether it came out, out loud so hi Hevor and also hi Leaky, I'm fairly certain I also said that, yes, because you said then, Luca. Yeah, sorry, I said it in my- sometimes I say things in my head and I don't say them out loud. Um, so we're then drawing a line, uh, so yeah, so if- make two- oh, okay, I've got two games in one day. Uh, we'll have to see what happens. We may have to do something in the new year. If I've not gone back to work, it technically counts as still- finishing off stuff before <laughs> in the Christmas holidays um, but yeah basically by next end of next week we're drawing a line under a whole bunch of games that we started this year um, because I have a whole new batch of promos um, and other ones that I want to stream um, and we need to be a wee bit more ruthless about what we stream how many streams we do of it because otherwise we just end up with a huge backlog and my buttons get all filled up on my stream deck and there's no room for things and I've got yeah a lot of stuff on plus I've got two requests from Jesse um 
I'm, and I've still got like a half a dozen like PC games and stuff. So yeah, we'll clean up the stream queue basically, and then yeah, um, see what we do on Saturday because we've got said we might do the second Figment World and also um, the boss in Lonesome Village um, but maybe Figment instead and leave Lonesome Village I don't know so yeah wow I can't believe that worked hey Mr. Kerr we'd love to hear your thoughts but I'm afraid we have places to be Come on, Iggy. Iggy's our bully. And obviously Mr. Kerr is this hyena guy. See ya, jerks! Yeah, he got half his face smushed with toxic shit. Fine, we know where that leads them. This way, we'll take the tunnels. Okay. Luca and Iggy winced as they sprinted through the thicket. The branches clawed at them, reluctant to give passage. After what felt like a marathon, Luca stopped in his tracks as they reached the clearing. What the? I wonder if this is all coming. That back was to the all same he place. was able to say before Iggy slammed into his back. The boys tumbled down a steep decline and crashed with a wheezing thud on a surface as hard as ice. In fact, it was ice. Chapter five signs they stood silently catching their breath the sky was like sapphire yeah so we have this whole frozen thing which seems to be possibly also a copy of the town there was also some sort of science experiment that may or may not have gone wrong i'm not entirely sure they tried to make crops grow better and something went wrong. That's what I'm getting. With each breath, a plume of steam escaped from Luca's lungs. Let's keep moving. Luca pulled Iggy to his feet as they gazed across a snowy terrain. That was actually pretty badass. Huh? <laughs> I think we lost him. Are we up in the mountains? I don't think so anything we went downhill and what's up with the winter wonderland all i know is there's no going back the way we came let's see if we can get our bearings follow me to find a way home hmm. a disc of smooth metal was lightly covered in snow this is where we popped up on the left hand side of the tree after we've went through the pipes were visible along the surface this goes under the convenience store no this goes down from the telephone box a manhole cover if it is i've never seen one like it but sadly it did not give us that and we went this way <gasps> luca luca are you there luca had almost forgotten the walkie-talkie he was carrying I've also forgotten all of the voices that I did for everybody. So if you're watching this after part two, uh, there was a two month gap and continuity on the voices is going to be spotty. It's that bozo care. I hope nothing bad has happened to you out in those woods. Luca looked at Iggy with hesitation. No need to be rude. With a resigned sigh, Luca responded. It seems like the only dangerous thing in the woods is you. He speaks, the young man of the hour. Now, how in tarnation did you end up with one of our radios? <laughs> Just lucky, I guess. Boy, how do you Van Horns are full of surprises, aren't you? You knew my parents? I never had the honor of meeting your father, but your mum sure was a handful. Luca winced, shoving the walkie-talkie back into his pocket. I forget how we acquired a walkie-talkie. We've been back and forth between storylines. <sighs> Apparently we're, we like playing games where we have flowcharts. To be fair, I really actually do like playing games when we have flowcharts, but I should already also 
try and, if I'm going to do multiple streams, try and do them fairly close together so I stop forgetting what is going on. But anyway. We gotta keep moving. This is the town sign. What's the readout? Sitting just above 258, Kelvin. That's down a bit from last time. Should we report this to Mr. Kerr? Meh, still within safe ranges. It may be spreading, but it's under control for now. Even a small nudge in the equilibrium could cause a cascade. Dude, relax. Just a few more sites, a few more sites to hit before we can punch out. Let's get this over with. But yeah, this is basically the town sign. What's all this? Hard to say with all the snow. I think it's a town sign. I can almost make out left under there. What town could even this even be? It couldn't be another town this deep into wheat wood. Looking at evidence to the contrary. Let's figure out what we're dealing with here. Step one, snow's gotta go. I'll see what I can do. As in what? Situations such as these, I find it best to chuck stuff first and ask questions second. Okay. Aha! Beacon pines. Yep. The boys Not quite sure stared going in then. disbelief at the sign that now clearly read Welcome to Beacon Pines. It don't make any sense. We're in Beacon Pines? How's that possible? We ran away from town, how do we get back here? Guess we got turned around? Where did all this snow come from? Well, it's been colder than normal lately. That's a pretty big difference between sweater weather and this Arctic hellscape. Puddle we fought at before. It was cold too. Maybe all of it leads to one source. I feel like there's two copies of the town and we're I don't know whether it's some sort of alternate reality dimension I can't remember um I think it's related what the hell is going on I'm gonna get you some answers let's keep moving listened. Each chain link encapsulated with a translucent layer of ice. Looks like stuff they put up around Wheatwood. The stuff who put up? Don't know. This stuff looked familiar to you. Looks like the bow near the puddle I am. Um, shoved me into, yeah. It's all frozen. Looking down at the frozen stream, Luca could faintly see a school of minnows encased in the ice. Whatever happened to her, it happened fast. Fish didn't have, even have time to run. Well, you know, swim run. Escape. The it's kind of like footsteps trailing Luca went hush. It's kind of like. They just built a new town and moved everyone over and everyone didn't realize. He looked back to see Iggy's face twisted with confusion. Everyone's gone. What? There's nothing here but more snow. There must be an explanation for all of this. We have to keep looking. You can look all you want. I quit. Maybe we have to keep going. 
You don't get it, do you? It isn't one of your pathetic anatomic stories. We aren't going to save the day. We aren't even going to save ourselves. Our face is mangled, the town's destroyed, and everyone we've ever known is gone. You don't know that. You can't just quit. Do whatever you want. I'm done. Maybe it's going to be okay. Luke appeared upward at the darkening sky. He let you out a long, death, huh? foggy breath. Faintly, Iggy began to cry. Seeing Iggy in such a pathetic state gave Luca a sense of compassion and more than a little guilt. It's getting pretty late, I think. Probably not a great idea to stumble around in the dark anyway. Luca allowed himself to collapse next to Iggy. Let's just rest for a bit. The boys huddled together for warmth and comfort. If not for exhaustion, their minds would be racing, trying to make sense of the events of the day. As it was, all they had energy for was to sit in silence, numb. The way the snow covered everything over, it's kind of calming. Yeah. Well, I hadn't had time to say it, but thanks. Huh? For getting us away from those creeps. I sort of froze up back there. Yeah, I should be the one apologising. It's all happened because I lost my temper. Nah, and that's bullocky. First of all, you didn't know what that gunk would do. You didn't, right? Of course not. And second, stop with this baloney about losing your temper. I did lose my temper. Iggy motioned sarcastically to his half-deformed face. Obviously. But that's exactly what you should have done. Huh? I was being an horse's ass. You were supposed to be an horse's ass in response. That's how it works. Iggy, I'm having a hard time following. You wanted me to fight you? Of course. Jeez, you goody-goody types take forever to understand this very basic point. Why would you go around saying cool things to try and get him into fights? Iggy shrugged. It's something to do. You're an asshole because you're bored? I mean, I can see that. Sometimes I just feel empty. You wouldn't understand. You and Rolo are always having a blast together. Laughing and calling that dinky little treehouse mission control. Iggy now wept openly. Perfect little Luca Van Orn. His perfect little life. My life is not perfect. Everyone in town likes you. Everybody. Hell, that new girl hasn't even unpacked yet and even she already likes you. You have Tish? He wiped his nose with a sleeve. I love Tish. Tish is great. But she ain't exactly the world's greatest conversationalist, you know. Luca gave a warm chuckle. I get that impression. Iggy cleared his throat as he wiped his eyes. Hmm. It must be raining now, are you? Definitely. Iggy arched into a wide yawn. Probably should try and get some sleep. Yeah. Let's lay low for now. Tomorrow we'll get to the bottom of all this. Luca's eyelids began to slowly drift shut. Luca? Yeah? I just did want to see the inside of your dinky little trios. What do you think? Not bad. I'll give you the full tour when we get back. You know what? Hmm? That's all Luca could whisper before succumbing to sleep. Iggy snuggled in some more. When it comes to worst days of my entire life, this one wasn't half bad. <laughs> the house smelled of warm bread. Luca was playing with toy blocks on the living room rug. He looked up to see his parents on the couch. His mother held his father's head in her lap. She idly stroked his hair while humming a song. A voice behind Luca spoke. This is how you remember them, huh? Luca turned to see his own face. The doppelganger from his dreams, still clad in a yellow hazmat suit, still carrying a look of disdain behind empty eyes. Aww. Look at this perfectly cozy scene. You know it wasn't really like this. The figure picked up a toy block and inspected it. It's amazing the facades that one can build given the right materials. Not that I blame us. These are a child's memories, all warm and fuzzy. You don't remember, do you? Luca snatched the block from the figure's yellow gloved hand. Remember what? The doppelganger pointed to the couch. The last day we saw him alive. Ooh! 
sorry. My thing is echoing. Oh. Oh. I need new shoulders. The day he chose to abandon us. Uh, didn't he, like, Luca die? turned to look at his father, still lounging on the couch. I don't know what that was. What? Mm. Oh, yes! Our father was involved in some sort of experiments. He was a doctor? We found some files. In the basement! Left-hand path. This is the right-hand path. Um... And the guy that owns the convenience store was partnering him and they were doing... They weren't doing experiments. They were treating people, but there were experiments going on, possibly. I don't know. That's not true. He tried to do the he right thing. He didn't abandon us. The doppelganger waved his hand dismissively. Everything is true here. It's just a matter of what we choose to see. Let me show you. The world flickered and pulsed. Luca was sitting next to his bed, listening to his heartbeat with one of his dad's stethoscopes. The doppelganger limped into the room. Now, now, we both know that's not how this went. Hi, Dan. Oh, my. Hello. No, I said yesterday that I would probably start early because I didn't know how much longer I had left. Because there's still a bit of tree left. Um... So, not spiting. Just what I said to Ding. He grabbed Luca's hand and guided the stethoscope to the floor. Luca heard muffled shouting, brought close by the stethoscope. It was his parents, fighting. Do you remember what we did next? Luca gave a slow nod and crept down the hall to peek through the banister. He could see the outline of his mother at the bottom of the stairs. Exactly. Damn it, Walt. We can't afford to get involved in this. Um, we will have a small-ish stream to finish off the epilogue of AI and anything that's not just mopping up achievements. Um story-wise tomorrow but the timing will depend on when i get back from my walk so i'm going for a walk with my friend and i get to meet his new baby and also catch up with him because i've not seen him in like i don't know six months possibly ridiculously long time anyway i have no sense of time but i think it was it's been a long time since i've seen him he had an entire baby in that time uh, well, his wife did. Um, so yeah, I'm catching it with a friend. But, on the other hand, there is going to be a baby who is, like, four weeks old. So, and also it gets dark at, like, four. So, it's probably going to be late afternoon stream. By the time I get back... But I don't want to go too late because there are other people streaming in the evening, like Lady McGree, um, and possibly Jesse, if he's feeling better. Um, but I just want to finish off AI story-wise, stream-wise, so I can cross another one off the list. Um, but I won't be doing an evening stream. But yeah, still haven't decided what I'm doing on New Year's Eve. Push comes to shove down, we could just stream some Minecraft dungeons, or we don't even have to stream, we could just, you know, do some Minecraft dungeons and voice chat. Um, but yeah, I haven't really thought about it, because, you know, it's already nearly the end. I have had two days of my week already. Time goes ridiculously fast when you are trying to relax. So, yeah. She was scared. His father stepped forward. What am I supposed to do? Just watch? There's a sickness in this town, and we both know who's behind it. I swore an oath to help people. I won't turn my back on them. 
Luca's mother grabbed Walt. She was crying, pleading. I can't lose you. Walt calmly removed Eleanor's hand from his shoulder. I've also got a 360 game that I really just want to finish. But I have to replay the entire thing, and it's like a speedrun. It's not onerous as a guide, it's just warm as a fan. And it's kind of boring, but... Mm. You hit level 50 in the season thing yesterday, so you have your cape for that achievement. Excellent. I have not played any more since the last time we played, <laughs> or since Extra Life. Since November, anyway. Whenever, whichever was latest, I don't remember. Or since we did something for your leapfrog. I think we did something for your leapfrog. Um, but yeah, there's still probably plenty to do. <sighs> I'm glad you have your cape, sir. What's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. I could never live with myself if I let Sharper get away with this. Sharper Valentine was the mayor at the time of this. Eleanor raised her voice. And I think he also died at the same time as our dad died, which is probably fairly soon after this conversation. Spare me your bullshit platitudes. What about our son? Is that's what I have to say for it. I paid two pound to get a cat. The cape was just an interesting side effect. Luca flinched, dropping the stethoscope down the stairs. I wanted a cat. Plus, I hate making progress in seasonal things and not even getting all the um, possible rewards because there's like a, you know premium membership or whatever and you know for a couple of quid i just want to have all the things even if they're literally just cosmetic and have no advantage whatsoever <laughs> it's just cosmetic but i got a kitty and i was so happy with my kitty walt turned with a panicked smile luca is that you buddy with tears in his eyes luca descended the stairs mom dad what's going on <sighs> Walt dropped to a knee to meet Luca eye to eye. Nothing, Buckaroo. Your mom and I just. I mean, I still have to reach level 45 for power all. anyway. It's only one achievement that unlocked early. Luca placed the stethoscope against his father's chest. His heart was racing. But yeah, you didn't miss much at the beginning of the stream. It was just me recapping the story as I remember it so far. Um, and then us running away and ending up in the snow thing. And then you came into basically the only real bit of story we've had. Aside from our bully crying. Because, you know, we saved his life. Um, but yeah. I'm glad I'm going for a walk tomorrow, to be fair, because I've got a bit bored today. I made the most ridiculously large um, Christmas risotto with leftover turkey and pigs and blankets and breadcrumbs, and it's amazing. But it's going to, like, last me for, like, the entire week. For an entire week. Back to the medieval grind. Oh! From scratch! That sounds painful. Have you got a backup, just in case? Um, I'm glad there's not any competitions right now that I need to do. I mean, technically I could get some more achievements in the round of the day list. And the AI one for finishing the story is one that's for random to-do list. Um, but I just haven't really felt like... And also the finishing the 360 game is a random to-do list one. Though I want to do that anyway because it's a point and click and I want to finish all the point and clicks. But, yeah, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I could do. I just can't... I can't be bothered, and also some of them are, like, a long way through a game. Wow! Okay, that is dedication. But yeah, I've been feeling a bit bored, which generally when I start feeling a bit bored means that I need to 
do something other than sit and play games. And well, it's also because I ran out of TV. So I'm now rewatching Death in Paradise again, and apparently merging with my overlay. Um, because I finished Criminal Minds, I finished Manifest, or at least a part of Manifest that's released. But I finished sixteen, well, fifteen and a bit seasons of Criminal Minds. Um. And I've caught up on all my pre Christmas series, except for the ones that I am really not following much anymore. All my medical dramas. Um so yeah, in lieu of starting a new series. Oh, and I watched Knives Out and the sequel. Which is really quite cool. Um But that was yesterday. I couldn't get into Dark Materials. I liked the books. Uh, this TV series just didn't grab, grab me. And Luther, I enjoyed. I never watched the last season, though. Whereas Death in Paradise is just a right amount of city plus detective solving. Um, and mostly just silly. But yeah. It sounded like you were going somewhere. Walt gently removed the device from Luca's ears. Listen to me, Luca. I have some business to take care of. I'll be back in time to tuck you in. Luca hugged mm. his father tightly. Promise? Oh, never promise that. Because it always means you're going to die. Walt stood up and walked to the door. He glanced over his shoulder. I promise. In stories, that always happens, and then the parent always ends up breaking the promise because they get killed doing something, you know, noble. With a wink and a grin, he put on his hat and strode out into the evening sun. I never saw him again. Hello. A figure approached soundlessly from the foggy snowfall. It stood above them, lingering in contemplation. Do we know this character? Slowly raising one hand above Iggy, it snapped out two brisk wraps on his head. Yes, but you're not in a storybook. Or, you know, some kind of media. It's more likely to happen every time, you know, a parent is like, I promise I'll be back. Or, you know, nothing bad's going to happen. It's like, are you tempting fate? In real life, no, that's fine. You're not going to die. Unless you happen to be going out and fighting evil. Or your James Bond or something. Sorry. <laughs> Pillows stuck behind my back. There we go. That's 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 comfortable. From a deep slumber, Iggy sprang up defensively. Get your hands off me. Whether it was the calming presence or the recognition that he was not in danger, Iggy felt his clenched fists lower. Just what you think you're doing? Luca looked up, gradually remembering his whereabouts. The figure exhaled a cloud of warm vapor. I don't know if we know them. It's a mouse. Do we know them? I've lost track of who we know. We probably know them. You two have certainly caused a lot of commotion. What's that supposed to mean? Take it easy, Iggy. We're asleep, minding our own business. You're the one running around knocking on people's heads. I'm sorry if I hurt you, Iggy. You didn't hurt nobody. Anybody. Huh? Oh, I see. You think you're better than me, you. When it came to complete strangers, Iggy had trouble cobbling together an insult. Okay, complete stranger then. You big acted, uh, scarfy necked, furball. <laughs> okay, let's lower the temperature a bit here. Interesting choice of words. I mean, let's just all calm down. Who are you? A friend, an observer, hitchhiker on the infinite expanse of possibility. Great, how about a name? If you must call me something, you can call me Nat. Iggy huffed with gratification. How about you make like a gnat and buzz off? Very well. Nat began to turn away indifferently. Oh, he's scarfy neck, yeah, 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 exactly. Wait, do you live here? You might say that. So you know where we are. 
You might also say that. Look, pal, we just want to find a safe way out here. You can help us or not. Before knowing how to leave, one must know where they are. All right, that does it. Luca, I don't know about you, but I'm getting out of here one way or another. Iggy turned sharply and began to stomp off. Enough of the riddles. Iggy, wait up. Realizing he'd worn their patience then, Nat relented. Very well, I suppose this is the time for metaphors. I'll show you how to get back Luca home. and Iggy turned around with hope in their eyes. Come here. Nat took a deep breath in. Close your eyes. This is my skeptical look. Nat exhaled slowly, then snapped his fingers. Okay, open them. For a brief moment, Luca and Iggy let themselves believe that some great magic was about to unfold, until they opened their eyes and found themselves in the exact same place, cold and disheartened. This is your home. This is Beacon Pines. Look, Nat, we don't know how we got here. Maybe we stumbled through some time travel gate in Weepwood. We teleported to some alternate universe. Well, this is just all some cool experiment by Ken and his goons. But this is not our home. You're inching closer to the truth. Alas, the reality is much less fanciful. Just give it to us straight. So be it. As I said, this is Beacon Pines. The original true Beacon Pines. See? Told you. Copy of the town. <sighs> They created a copy of it and moved everyone. You both grew up here. The town you've called your home for the past several years is a replica. Remarkable achievement of engineering, to be fair. But a replica, nonetheless. That's impossible. It's too much work. You'd need a whole town to replicate your old town. Indeed, to pull off such a fleet would require immense labour power. That which could be moved would be moved. That which could not would require a precise duplicate. Would have noticed. Someone would have noticed. You'd think so, unless the auditing was impeccable. A mind-numbing attempt to detail. As for the innumerable trivialities which complete the tapestry, then you can leave that to, to this miraculous thing we call a brain. That's a real virgin to discontinuity or revulsion, even. The brain has a wonderful way of smoothing out the rough edges, keeping us sane. But you would notice the differences. And they would scratch. But after enough time, if no one else saw them, you just sort of accept them and they become normal. It's like when I move stuff, or if I take stuff off a shelf to clean it and then put it back on and it's not quite right, it'll look not quite right for a couple of weeks and then it'll just be that it's the new normal. Because I won't remember exactly how it was, just that it's not right. I guess this would be the same with the town, you know, that door's not quite the right colour, you know, where's that hole that we, you know, or that thing that we scratched out there, or that broken bit of something. But you just feel like it's, it's a Mandela effect all over again. Luca and Iggy looked around uncomfortably. So you're saying that someone made an entire new tone Moved us all and no one noticed? Precisely. But why? Why is the one question that can be answered with certainty? The best one can do is to uncover... Nat narrowed his eyes, furrowed his brow, and uttered... The source? Why'd you say the source like that? Why indeed. Yes, the source thing that was discovered. This is why people died. This is why the harvest broke. But I mean, the land wouldn't be right. Oh, this is so weird. Anyway. Luca began to laugh uncomfortably. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. There's no he way they could. He down at his feet. His eyes started back and forth in contemplation. With a sudden pain, a thought struck him. If this is really home... He sprinted off into the pale distance. As Iggy turned to follow, Nat called out. Iggy, it's not too late to turn back. Simply head west through Weepwood. 
He's gone to find his gra the grave, for his dad's grave. Chapter 6 Hey, Chapter 6 again. The Source. Nat expressed his sympathy with a shrug and sauntered off as unassumingly as he'd arrived. He'd given Luca and Iggy what they needed, and nothing more. As Luca sprinted across the snow, Who the events that? of the past few days became clearer, pieces to a larger puzzle. Rollo said he was underground somewhere, captured. Mr. Kerr tried to cover it up with lies. The clipboards were hell-bent on capturing Iggy. It all seemed to point to perennial harvest. That's the GMO company whose name I'd forgotten. But right now, there was one thing that Luca needed to know. Is there a copy of his dad's grave? Luca stopped dead in his tracks. The tree was gone, uprooted and moved, leaving a raw gash in the earth. He dropped to his knees and dug wildly at the cold snow. His numb hands hit something hard. A headstone. That's where the game started. A dry started. whisper escaped Luca's lips. You're here. All this time I thought I was visiting you. But you've been here, alone, in the snow. Dad, I'm so sorry. I ruined your favourite spot in the world. Our favourite spot in the world. Dad, what do I do? There was no reply. Just snow-covered silence. Would you give me the slip like that? What if I couldn't find you, you jerk? Iggy finally noticed the tears welling in Luca's eyes and the snow-covered grave. Oh. Iggy, they... They stole this tree, Iggy. Yikes. Suddenly, they heard the crunch of approaching footsteps in the snow. We got eyed. Change from 59 Kelvin. Fall off distance, still good. Yeah, something went wrong, which is why they had to create an entire new town. Um, and something goes even more wrong. Not an alternate reality, literally just a copy. Did you hear me? I said 259. Sorry. Ever think about what we did here? We saved a whole town of people. Don't feel like it sometimes. But everything we left behind. It's the grave of someone with a family. People who love them will never know the truth. Truth's overrated. He bent down to scoop up a snowball and lobbed it playfully. Hey. Don't be such a downer, dude. You took this job to change the world. Yeah. Come on. It's almost lunchtime. Eh, weirdo. We did see our gran in one of those yellow suits. Hmm. So where does Mizuki fit in? <laughs> Mizuki's not in this one. My um, stream stopped. Um, on only on my PC, not on the actual stream thing. Um, here I thought I was a jerk. These dingus is out literally dancing on graves. Luca stuttered through heaving sobs. I was visiting him. I thought he was with me. Not gonna lie, that's a bad break. It's my voice. Iggy gave Luca a solid smack on the back of his head. Hey! Who's any of this helping? T Sitting there in the snow, crying like some pushover. Who are you helping? Iggy, look what they did. They lied to everyone. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Look at Van Horn. You're a lot of things, but you ain't no pushover. What did I tell you before? Yes, maybe Mizuki's in it and we just don't see her. When some jerk comes at you acting like a horse's ass... I should stand up for myself. Oh yeah. Kieran and his merry little band of clipboards pulled off the switcheroo for a reason, right? That mentioned something about a source. Luca wiped his eyes with a sleeve. Whatever's at the source must be awfully valuable to perennial harvest. Sure would be a shame if something unfortunate would happen to their precious source, wouldn't it? What do you have in mind? If it's small enough to steal, we snatch it. 
If it's too big to snatch, we smash it. And what if it's too big to smash? Iggy flashed a mischievous smile and cracked his knuckles. <laughs> I'm always up for a challenge. I'm gonna make this right, Dad, I promise. Let's do this. Locate the source. It can get awful cold out there in those woods, Luca. Probably best you two stay put and conserve your energy. Help's on the way. Where's Rolo? Where's my mum? Did you kill her? Oh, heavens no. Do I seem like a killer to you? Yes. Iggy and Luca shared a skeptical look. Creepy kill. Well, do I? Ah, oh, shucks. Now that hurts my feelings. Screw that guy. Wait a minute. This is the original town, and that means... Iggy darted behind a large pine and began digging furiously. He emerged, holding a shoebox with a crude skull painted on its lid. What's that? Long story. So a few years back, I uh, came into possession of some print grade fireworks. Uh, not the wimpy firecracker stuff they give kids. The good stuff. Why did you bury it under a tree? It's a long part of the story. You and Rolo were doing chores at Rolo's chicken coop. And you guys pissed me off for some reason Luca or another. Luca rolled his eyes with realization. No, you didn't. Iggy stifled a chuckle. Yup. I just wanted to give you guys a little scare. But like I said, these were some primo fireworks. <laughs> a titular pine! So I might have underestimated things. Of the chicken coop. Prefer to think of it as an incendiary redecoration. Oh, I'm going to use that one. Sorry, but you should have seen the looks on your faces. I got grounded for months. Which is why I needed to stash the evidence and lay low. So I buried them under that tree. When I came back for them later, they was gone. I figured some grown-up found them and tossed them. Iggy triumphantly raised the shoebox. Turns out it wasn't the fireworks that got moved. It were us. Unbelievable. Epic, I think you mean. Do you think this is a game? Use Flash Boyo. You're not a hero. Little brat who isn't aware of his head. Hero is just someone who refuses to give up. Comics these days are rotting children's brains. Everyone thinks they're a spaceman superhero. I was always partial to Hank Atomic myself. Is that so? Do you really think you have a chance against us? You have no idea how powerful we are. Prepare for blast off, loser. I mean, I feel as if we blew up the source. Did they, that mean they moved our treehouse? Trying to cross this bridge. Crooked. Just like this whole stinking place. Ooh, hello, we got a crooked though. Excellent. This is why we don't just blast on with the story. Luca and Iggy inched up to the edge of the hole with bewilderment in their eyes. Arctic air breathed out of the cavern in heaving gusts. It's cold. <laughs> Echo. Whoa. You can see why they wanted to move us all out of town now. But why would they dig a giant hole? I think this is it. This is the source. It's a dang hole. Smash an owl. Oh, it's Mr. Kerr. Oh, it's much more than that, my annoying little friend. Yeah. Where's Rollo? I wasn't lying before. It's safe. Well, safer than you two, at least. Drats, it's curled. Just had to drag me all the way out here, didn't you? Mr. Kerr gazed down the abyss in contemplation. 
It really is something, isn't it? What did you do to our town? What is all of this? Well, that's a doozy of a question. This is the source where they collect the unrefined, um... Kerr scratched the back of his head. Honestly, boys, I don't understand any of this well, well enough to explain it. The fact of the matter is, I'm not paid to know. What do you mean you don't know? Ain't you in charge? Oh, heavens no, my role is merely to flush a winning smile and manage various, uh, complications. I think we're a complication. Complications like us? You are a smart boy. His face contorted into a saccharine grin. It really is nothing personal. Some people are destined to strive for greatness, and others are simply obstacles along the way. Seems like you were destined to be a creepy lucky. The point is that we all play our part in life. Mine just happened to be a lead in the role of a lifetime. I happen to be extras ready for your curtain call. We aren't giving up without a fight. Your smile's not going to be so winning enough to weird on with you. Now, boys, there's no need for melodrama. It makes even a professional such as myself embarrassed for you. Let's change the mood a bit. Kerr snapped his fingers. Scene change. Oh, shit. Clipboards. There, that's better. Deal with them. Iggy turned to Luca with a sly glance. Why are you smirking? Because I have a box full of fireworks and you don't. <laughs> Iggy waved the box into the air, threatening to drop it down the hole. And stop. Let's not do something regrettable. Joke's on you. Regret is one of my specialities. Out of curiosity, what would happen if I threw these in your precious old... I think you freeze everybody. Nothing. N nothing at all. <laughs> You're a terrible liar. I'll have you know, I'm an exceptional liar. But, 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 that's far enough. He plucked a single bottle rocket from the box and held it up with reverence. Stop, you fool. Call off your games. After a long pause, Mr. Kerr flung up his hand with frustration. Very well. You can all head back for the night. It's been a long day. I'll handle these two from here. Hmm. If you're confused about what's going on, the frigid too. Air. But you can play this on Game Pass. And I advise you do, because it's a really cool game. It's just us now, Iggy. You can put that down. What, like this? With a nonchalant flick, Iggy tossed the firework into the hole. Ooh. Whoa. With a growl, Kerr leapt at Iggy, crashing through Luca. <gasps> Iggy tried to twist away, but in the struggle, they both tumbled over the side. Luca dove forward, bracing Iggy's hand just before it slipped. His grip was made precarious by the cold, wet snow. He could see Kerr further down, clinging to Iggy's coat. A reckless child, what have you done? Luca, listen to me. Hold on tight and use the walkie-talkie to call them back. How, um, what channel do I use? It doesn't make a damn difference. They're always listening. If you do that, the clipboards will just all us up and snag us both. The only way you'd get out of this is if Kerr's out of the picture. Just let go and save yourself. If he lets go, we'd both die. You don't want to die, but seeing the look on your face almost makes it worth it. Mr. Kerr, you've had a long life. Why don't you actually do something selfless and just let go? Mr. Kerr gasped with insult. Long life? Have you know I can still play 25. You should have heard me sing the part of Phileas Young. With a wild look in his eye, Mr. Kerr began to hum a proud melody. Brum, dum, dum, dum. Brum, dum, dum. Wow, can you believe this guy? Hum! I got a hum. Luca's hand began to cramp. His voice began to crack. Uh, just let go. You know can do. If you want to save your friend, you'll have to save me too. Luca, look at me. It's okay. Luca felt Iggy loosen his grasp. Okay, he's gone from annoying ass white bully to science experiment gone wrong to hero. And I'm not sure how to feel. 
You aren't going to kill your friend like that, are you? Every muscle in Luca's body burned. I'm not his friend. Yes, you are. Now nah, I'm just a no good bully. Like you care. Nicky, no! I felt his hand slipping. And I told you what you need to do with bullies. I can't. It's your only way out of this mess. Two birds with one stone. Makes sense for us to fall together. Wackadoo's travelling packs. A calm settled over Iggy's face. Luca, let me do this. Iggy's voice was colder than the bitter air billowing from the chasm. Let me do the right thing for once. Luca had no choice but to... Refuse or accept? Oh, the choices. Let's just do you refuse Luca first. Had no choice but to refuse Iggy's Oh, request. you must play this he avoid. It's amazing. And reach it's on Game Pass. In his pocket. A wild delight crept onto Mr. Kerr's face. Don't worry, we'll let our bully friend be a hero. We just have to choose both options. I need to choose That's both options. That's a good lad. Now, radio for help. Iggy begged Luca with his eyes one last time, but Luca pressed the button and called out. We... we need help. Mr. Kerr is in danger. It wasn't long before they were once again surrounded by clipboards. Mr. Kerr sighed with relieved frustration. There you are. You really are a worthless lot, aren't you? Mirror, now. A clipboard dutifully produced an ornate ivory hand mirror and Mr. Kerr began preening his tussled hair. Ah, that's better. Mr. Van Horn, I applaud your sharp thinking under duress. I'll put in a good word for you with the founder. Take them away. A swarm of hands overpowered Luca. The last thing he saw before a cloth bag was pulled over his head was the defeated look on Iggy's face. The end. There we go. I knew that was going to be a bad ending. So... I would, wanted to do that one and get out of the way first. Mm, I think this was one of those times where doing the right thing was the wrong thing. Yeah, I know. Luca had no choice but to accept Iggy's One day, yes, I know. I have so many games downloaded. That's why I just link, want to try and Luca finish stuff off. teardrop sail down into the howling void. As his fingers slowly gave up, he met eyes with Iggy. Good. Mm. The two silhouettes were swallowed by darkness. I love this narrator's voice. <gasps> <laughs> I see one out with a bang. But I'm... Those are some epic fireworks. Lucas, sweetie, please move, just in case. Hell of a goodbye, Iggy. <gasps> Lucas, you should really step back. What? Quickly. Ooh. Hey, that at least didn't freeze the whole town. Curious. Ah, but of course. Fireworks of Iggy's must be just the right amount of energy. We should get enough here before perennial harvest arrives. Not until you tell me what just happened. Your friend's sacrifice just saved this town. For a little while, anyway. How? Tempest liquamine is a peculiar substance. It can change the relationship between matter and time itself. But doing so requires unfathomable energy. In a closed system, that energy can only come from its surroundings. A useful side product of this property being, by adding precisely the correct amount of energy to it, one can create a cryogenic cascade. So the gunk makes things cold and the fireworks made the hole freeze over? Well, that's why there's an ice thing going on, because it literally sucked all the energy out. That's one way of putting it, yes. As dumb luck would have it, the fireworks weren't strong enough to generate a runaway reaction. I shudder to think what would happen in that case. That's what happened on the left-hand side, where our grandma dropped a freaking atomic bomb down there. We have some idea what that would look like. 
Yeah. It will take them a good while to safely break through and access the source again. If you know all of this stuff, why haven't you been helping? I have been, in my way. In each one of us has our role to play. Iggy's role, it turns out, was to buy us precious time. Mine has been to observe and wait. Wait for what? You. Me? Why? What's my role? A fierce twinkle flashed in Nat's eyes. Who is Nat? Luca Van Horn. You are going to save the world. With a chuckle, Nat turned and walked west. Dumbfounded, Luca followed behind him, trudging through the snow. Every step taking him further away from everyone and everything he knew, and closer to destiny. To be continued in Beacon Pines, Pines Harder. <laughs> Revenge served cold. Second time's a charm? Wait, that's it? <laughs> This ends with a crummy cliffhanger just when it was getting good? I was even starting to like Iggy. No way. I refuse to be associated with some never-ending parade of sequels. Let's go back and find something more definitive. Right. So, that is an ending of that thing. Hey, we have Hum now. Right. But I really want to go back to the fishing hole. I somehow think that's going to have to be a... In the stillness, he began to hum. And in the stillness... So this is when Gran's about to drop a bomb to down. Hum. Which would be too much energy. After the death of his father, Luca had trouble sleeping. Each night, his mother would sit at the foot of his bed and hum a gentle melody. It was the only thing that could calm his mind. The only thing that, however briefly, could make it all seem okay. That melody pervaded every memory Luca had of his mother. And we think Gran is actually his mother. Shivering in the raw snow, he began to hum it out loud. Because whatever she's dropping down now is going to be too much. Gran lowered the torch, listening closely. As recognition slowly set in, her heart sank. Those countless nights of consolation, the incomparable loss they shared together. She let the torch fall to the snow and sizzle out. A few steps toward Luca was all she could bear before dropping to the snow herself. Through a flood of tears, she began to hum along, note for note. So yeah, me is an um Okay, apparently we're humming. Am I meant to be doing something? Ah. Head in astonishment. There we go. The last time he heard that melody was the last night he saw his mother. Huh. 
Happy I'm so sorry, my name Buckaroo. Buckaroo? The only people will call me that are my dad and your mother. Luca blinked through blurry, watery eyes, trying to see more clearly. He could just make out the impression of a familiar face. He peered across the snowscape at the woman on her knees. Something about her was undeniably his mother. Only smaller, older, changed. Mom? That's right, Bakura. Mom! Luca sprinted as fast as he could toward his mother. They held each other close, and the cold retreated from their bodies. Ele Eleanor, I thought you were gone. You should have known I would never abandon myself. Eleanor looked down at Luca, tightening her embrace in an appeal for forgiveness. That weird chemical stuff that aged half the bully's face, I'm guessing she got... Or she got experimented on. I'm guessing she ended up, you know, getting, experiencing that. How? You're a smart man, Joseph. I thought you'd have pieced it together by now. You were exposed. Mum, I don't understand any of this. What, what happened to you? Why did you go? Why did you leave me? I never left you. I was always right here, Luca. Why did you lie to me? You tore me up, Luca, but I did it to keep you safe. I thought that getting answered would help us both move on. The more I discovered, the more I realized the danger we were in. Until perennial harvest was stopped. It was better if everyone thought I was gone. You could have trusted me. And these are bad people, Luca. They won't stop until they get what they want. I don't care who gets hurt in the process. Then what do we do? We have to stop them. Joseph slumped into the cold, wet snow. They can't be stopped. This is too big. I tried beating him at their own game. Done fighting fire with fire. For the first time in a long time, her voice felt like her own again. No more lies. I see now there's a better way to stop perennial harvest. The cold, hard truth. Luca gazed down at Nuncreed with pity. He looked small. Joseph stared into the snow, as if searching it for answers. Come on, everyone. We've got a party to crash. Don't know who the other two were at the top there. Some goons, I'm assuming. But yeah, they've discovered some sort of energy source that sucks all the heat. It's a endothermic reaction. Cryogenic reaction. That's why they had to move the town. And then, yeah, you put an explosive down it, it freezes everything. You don't understand, he always wins. Who? Is Sharper Valentine still alive? Oh, crap, chapter nine. The devil you know. Seven months ago. Ooh, he flashed back. Eleanor Van Horn crept down the maze of sterile hallways under perennial harvest. She stopped in front Super of the large spy. steel door marked Deep Engineering. No turning back now. She raised a trembling hand. The stolen keycard worked as promised, and the door buzzed open with mechanical efficiency. She was immediately hit with the smell of disinfectant. It was some sort of laboratory. In one corner was a desk covered in papers. Across the room stood a tall metal pod with hoses protruding from its base. She rushed to the desk and began shifting through the piles of papers. They were experiment reports on something called Tempest Liquimen. There were dozens of them. Every one stamped, failed. Eleanor heard the sharp echo of footsteps approaching. She was out of time. Her eyes scanned the room, eventually landing on the strange pod. Muttering a curse under her breath, she dashed over and dove inside. And that is what change is all about. Oh, the other two were Rolo and the the her friend is the, the new friend. Grabbing the future by the scruff of the neck and making things happen. Change is a choice. I'm tickled pink that we're all making that choice together. Please unveil the sign that got defenestrated. 
<laughs> Vandalized. How great is that? This man is a liar. Excuse me? I will not. This town has a dangerous secret and perennial harvests only exist to keep it hidden. Nonsense. They picked up the whole damn town and put it right under our noses. You aren't making any sense, dear. Mr. Kerr addressed the crowd with a sarcastic tone. Imagine such a thing. It's absurd and just plain impossible. They promised they could fix the foul harvest. They told us they would clean this place up. We had just left to leave town for a few days. But while they had us evacuated... Mrs. Hartford, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to. You're afraid of a lot of things, aren't you? You sniveling little worm. This is growing tiresome. A little help, please. Don't you all see? This festival is a sham. Excuse to have the whole time gather in one place. They're planning something awful. I don't know what, but these people are wicked. Don't listen to her. She has absolutely no proof. I am the proof. I, Melina Van Horn. Whispers filtered through the crowd. Well, aren't you just as sneaky as the Dickens? We all knew Valentine's fertilizer was too good to be true. And now this whole town is paying the price. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry about this disruption. My associates will take this obviously disturbed woman somewhere comfortable. So that she can get the help she needs. She's not the one who's disturbed. Yay, Joseph! Two-timing clown. Finally doing the right thing. You all know there's something wrong with this town. It was just easier to look the other way. The truth is... That's the adopted son, but I'm wondering if somehow an experiment made that, and that's actually sharp at Valentine or something. <laughs> it's quite enough, Mr. Nuncrete. Torment dragged on Joseph Nuncrete's face. Yes, sir. Take them away. No, I want them to see this. Ah, the ever tempestuous Eleanor Van Horn been quite the thorn in my side. It's got to be Sharper Valentine, somehow rejuvenated and pretending to be adoptive son of, like, his daughter or something. He's the mastermind, it's got to be. Like a weed that's bur burrowed where it doesn't belong. I must confess, you look dreadful. He paused for a moment, plucking a piece of fuzz from his sweater and discarding it to the ground. Consider yourself in rare company. You've managed to pull one over on me. It won't happen again. I knew you had some sort of plan to strap to a little party. But alas, I expected something a bit more impressive than incoherent rambling. No matter, your fear is yours to bear. Mr. Kerr? Yes, sir? It's a shame it was cut short, but I thank you for that rousing oratory. I will take it from here. Yes, sir, of course, sir. You have done quality work for me, William. You can look forward to the re recompense we agreed upon. Kerr gave a bow of deference. Founder, you are most grateful. Gasps rippled through the crowd. Told you. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here Solomon on out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. You can all call me. Sharper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belt. He's figured out how to harness mist. it so he can be rejuvenated and aged. We could probably fix our mum. So what happened to our dad? Is our dad actually still dead? Because it'd be so cool if our dad wasn't actually dead. A hushed horror gripped the crowd. This is a story about change. <laughs> What now? Ah, so you didn't see that coming. Good. Sharper I did. <laughs> his new hands. Hmm. Well, this is quite the improvement. Everything looks so much smaller now. But yeah, clearly, because there was, like, in his will, there was a you must adopt this boy thing. So obviously, he knew he had this plan set up. 
Eleanor was right about one thing. The festival was a ruse. I wanted you all to witness my glorious return with your own eyes. Why does everyone look so downtrodden? This is a celebration, people. Maybe it would help if we set the mood. Mr. Kerr, be a dear and reveal the sign. The Sharp of Alpine. Ah, okay, so not. I thought it was, you know. Vandalized. Ah, Sharper wonderful. choked out a crude squawk of a laugh. Frustrated grumbles sprinkled through the crowd. Shop, you malicious bastard. Ooh, malice. I'm glad you're back so I can tell you to your face. You destroyed this town. We ain't gonna let you get away with it again. Sorry, this is not the time for audience participation. Some assistance, Mr. Kerr. Kerr gave a subtle nod to the clipboards. You coward! Does anyone else have something to contribute? A helpless quiet settled over the crowd. I thought so. Do you all truly believe you could be free of me? The town of complete and utter fools. Your people should be celebrating my return. They've clearly lost without me. And that leads me nicely to my children. Daddy! I gave you both the greatest gift a parrot can give. The opportunity to prove yourselves in my absence. Squandered. To say I'm disappointed would be an understatement. Boy! Silence, Augustus, an adult speaking. I don't know which is worse, a son who is completely hopeless, or a daughter with such potential who inevitably lets me down. Unless you fail me with admirable consistency. Thankfully, I was counting on it this time. Father, I... have been wasting time, my dear. What have you accomplished? I was focused on cementing our legacy. Legacy? It's a legacy when you can just live forever. But what about... It's all right, kiddo. I'm afraid you suffer from a complete lack of imagination. There's just no helping it. Oh my god, she even dresses like him. Now then, where's Joseph? You didn't take the opportunity to slip off, did you? Ah, there he is. Everyone should give him a hand. None of this would have been possible without Joseph. I think I've said enough. Nonsense. The people deserve to know how helpful and loyal you've been. Only did what I did because he left me no choice. I always had a choice, Joseph. You were simply too weak to take it. No matter, cheer up. You are about to be a witch beyond your wildest dreams. You should follow Mr. Kerr's example. When I found him, he was in a sorrier state than any of you. An aging actor that's desperate to recapture his youth. He played his part and soon he'll be able to play the leading man again. Forever, in fact, if he remains loyal. That goes for all of you. Well, those who haven't already frit away my goodwill. Beacon Pines is mine again. And I am willing to share its spoils in exchange for absolute loyalty. <laughs> Are you saying William Kerr was never in charge of praying harvest? Ha! <laughs> you think that puffed up blood the sky could have accomplished all of this? Dawn, I suppose. It's time for your big exclusive. Sharper addressed the crowd with indignant pride. He'd planned this moment for so long that now, at the deed's fruition, it almost felt frivolous. You see, I needed a figurehead to hold things down while I orchestrated my return. Someone meant to misdirect, lie, and bilk this town for a spell. So I invented William Gare. Take your bow, you've earned it. Mr. Kerr flourished a preposterously elaborate bow. Trick C. Montesquieu, as there's been extraordinary at your service. Founder, I just want to thank you again for this opportunity. It truly was the role of a lifetime. Wait. So this Bill Kerr was a Pat C. Oh, <laughs> time! Oh, Rolo. Now that your secret's out in the open, what's to stop this town from rising up against you? Oh, that's the delicious part. Fear. Thanks to our clipboards, I know what each and every person in this town fears most. Ew, did we give him some honest answers? And I will make those fears manifest for anyone who steps out of line. The choice is simple. I'm not afraid of you. Nah, <laughs> the young hero. I've kept a keen eye on you, boy. 
You and your friends made a habit of disrupting my plans. What a pity if things would have gone a bit differently. You might have had your moment of triumph. But that's fate for you. Ooh. You can't do this. Oh, but I can. I have won. Never underestimate what a great man can do given time. And now time is my plaything. Perhaps the most expensive thing I've ever bought. But well worth it. Ha! Sharper coughed up one final laugh and cracked his knuckles. Enough chit chat, let's get to work, shall we? And so, Sharper set about remaking the town in his own image. The fertilizer factory soon reopened for business. Sales rose steadily, as more and more farmers across the countryside began to swear by its miraculous properties. Beacon Pines became famous, a secretive town that, for the right price, shared its gifts with all. Gifts that became more and more necessary in a world where winters grew longer and longer. Huh. The end. This is wrong, but things are becoming clearer now. You can feel it, right? We can't let Sharper win. He might just be the key to this whole thing. Let's see. Okay. So I'm guessing Malice goes in here. Malice and Shame. Interesting. What I want to do is go fishing. Now we'll continue with the story. There was a malice lurking behind those eyes. Like a trap ready to spring. Luca felt the weight of Nuncrete's hand on his shoulder. Something wasn't right. He didn't know why, but something was telling Luca to get out of there. I just want this to be all over. Of course, I'm sure it would all work out soon enough. I should get going. I told Roxy I'd check for Rolo at the tree house. free of Nuncrete's grasp. Of course. Ooh, Luca. You know your dad and I were good friends back in the day. You can come to me with anything. Anything at all. Don't trust you, dude. Run away. And I'm gonna go fishing if I can. Oh no. Okay. Ooh, this lady is reading a story and it's like our story. It's quite funny. He looked down and muttered in a gruff voice. Mum always told me my problems would look smaller once I grew up. My problems always seem to grow right along with me. Heavens, I sense big trouble ahead. Festival decorations are a bit humdrum. Now, if I were to throw a festival, it'd be a thing to behold. I agree. This is more than already a little sad. It's worse than sad. It's boring. But we need a little something to spice things up. I'm listening. You know that festival sign waiting to be unveiled? It'd be a shame the if someone scurried off, eagerly formulating a plan. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah, that's what I remember. I'm not sure where I'm going, but hey. Identify yourself, please. Nelly Modbo. I work here now. I'm unable to locate you on our stuff roll. We well, don't officially start until tomorrow. Mr. Kerr said I'd come in early to get a few things done. Hold, please. Clearance authorised. Thank you. Our half is to wait. That's what's its mum. Whoa. You get a wrench to the noggin sneaking up on a guy like that. Don't scare him, I'm always junking, Sonny. Evening, Jeff. Isn't it kind of late to be junking? Might as well ask the same thing you. Find anything good? Bah, ever since perennial lava has moved in, even the junk is trash. You can learn a lot about a person by looking at what they throw away. This bunch is all shredded paper and coffee cups. Well, I'd better get going. Didn't see nothing if you didn't see nothing. See what? Exactly. Uh, 
There we go. Let's see if we've got any more fishing things. So we've done tickle, junk, struggle, pungent, smack, and then we've got crooked. A bent nail onto the line. If all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And that should fill the last spot. I don't know if there's actually any fish in here. It's a photo of you and Uncle Joseph. Let me see that. Hmm, look at those two young fools. Up in the bottom of the pond, who can say? Some things are just hard to explain. Miss Uncle Joseph. He doesn't come fishing with us anymore. He's busy with his new job at Valentine's. What's a new job got to do with him fishing with us? It's complicated. Like I said, some things are hard to explain. Oh, wasn't the only... Oh, okay. Luca wrapped a twig of... Some fish have... Ref I thought that would be our uh, fish everything up, but obviously we're still missing something. Just gonna reveal. Out with a bang. Mm. Catch all the fish. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Close the book. That'll be story complete. Born in a barn. Mm. So we've got born in a barn and pop goes the weasel. I'm assuming that story end. And yeah, catch all the fish. I just don't have um, all the actions yet. I can't remember who's where in this one. So, oh no. No, our friend is missing, I think. Yeah, our friend is still missing. This will be the true path, I guess. So, oh, wait at the treehouse in case Rollo shows up. Oh, okay, cool. So, yeah, so we picked up Crooked, Hum, and Malice, which gave us two story things and a fish. Rollo? He aired a long holler into the woods. No. Sigh. Rollo, wherever you are, I hope you're okay. <laughs> Luca felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. <laughs> Once again, Luca found himself in a vast black expanse. Okay, so the Born in a Barn one is like the beginning of the story. Oops. I accidentally locked my computer. So we can go back and do one at the end. But that's definitely story complete. Okay. And this one is unlocked by a malice. The Pop Goes the Weasel is unlocked by a malice. I'm not going to spoil that one for myself. Okay, so we need Tickle. Tickle, Junk. Pull! And Cling. 
Okay. We've got struggle, pungent, crooked, and smack. Okay. He knew exactly where to two, go. I'm but I sort of missed them. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. We might just finish Joff's story on stream and go back for the missing bits. The source. He plopped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame, waiting. Soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping sporadically until all that was left was a single ember. Lucas stood up and dusted himself off. Some of them require replaying bits. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket, a keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, buckaroo. Luca turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face. A place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait together. Luca found himself staring at his father's face, trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out as Luca's doppelganger stepped forward. That's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. Is... is any of this real? Are you real? Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course. I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's... angry he's gone. Does that make sense? Through his tears, Luca laughed. I think so. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. Are you in there? A commanding voice rumbled from below. Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. Chapter 5 Dangers big and small. So apparently there's one if the first time you go into the treehouse you go outside and pull on the antennae. And then there's another one which you get when you're looking for Rolo in the library on the right hand fork if you go down and talk to the guy outside the museum. That gives you the other two fish ones in case anyone is doing this. Um... The pop goes the weasel pop, pops on this path pops um and the born in a barn basically at the very beginning of the game leave the tap running or the fridge open and then on the left hand track when you're delivering jam your gran will yell at you for <laughs> leaving the tap on and the fridge open i didn't do that so you know i'd have to go back um but yeah, so I, I won't do those on stream because they require replaying bits. Um, unless I can somehow get pull on an antenna. I don't think I can. Um, so those two achievements I will do outside of the stream. But as everything is basically nearly replayable with like the little flower jumps, once you've completed it, it should be fine. Um, you should be able to replay sections. You just pick your the correct choices. Um, I think shit goes left and chill goes right. The Roxy choice. And if you do the left one, if you do the shit one, then that's when your friend doesn't go missing. And the other... Oh, oh hang on. Maybe it's the other way around.
No, it is. Sorry, it is the other way around. Chill one means that Roto isn't with you. So that's the left hand side. So it's actually the right hand side you want for both. So you could probably replay this in just one lot, one bit. I say replay, revisit. So you go to the first chapter, leave the tap on, leave the fridge door open, replay, pick shit. So Rolo's with us at the factory. Then when we talk to the talk, talk to Gran in the kitchen, we should get that achievement and then continue till we get asked to look for Rolo at the library and then go down to talk to the guy at the museum at that point and also in the first bit pewing the antenna then you should be able to unlock the final two fishing things as well so that would unlock two achievements um assuming that i don't miss the pop goes the weasel one in this branch and yeah so it won't be a 100 percent walkthrough per se in this video but if you're listening to this um that's just how you get the two ones that i'm missing Lucas stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. I didn't think to go talk to everybody. Because <laughs> talking to everybody every single time gets a bit tedious. And, you know, I was looking for my friend. So I didn't think to go and talk to anyone else at that point. Or I missed that there was a guy outside the museum. Um, and yeah, apparently I didn't try climbing out the window, though I guess that was a thing. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. Balcony. As his hand grasped the door handle, Luca froze. A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. Oh wait, it's Rolo. No? Yes. Yeah, stop right there. Or I'll... Sheesh, I know it's dark and all, but I figured you'd recognize me. Who are the you? The large figure cocked its head inquisitively. <gasps> they aged him. Stop now, I'll clobber you with a baseball bat. Whoa, 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 take it easy. Luca, you need to get your eyes checked. That's me, Rolo. Nice try, but I know you aren't Rolo. You're like one of his random uncles or something. Where is he? Ha, <laughs> uncle? Look who quit messing around. That's me. If it really is, you prove it. Fleming chicken coop, Luca. Luca's jaw dropped. He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. Something about him was undeniably Rolo, only bigger, older, changed. How? What happened to you? When I was running away, I ran into more people in those yellow suits. They grabbed me and dragged me away. But where did they take you? Dunno, they threw a bag over my head. I was cold and smelled like a swimming pool. I think it was an underground lab or something. You made my hands all big, Luke. Rollo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Pretty sweet, right? I mean, that wouldn't be my first pick for a superpower. But beggars can't be choosers. Rollo, it wasn't just your hands. My feet too? Dang, Pa just made me new shoes. Wait, Luca, why Luca are you so small? Luca moved to the side and pointed Rolo to his reflection in the balcony window. What his the? hands shot up to his face. Holy Tolnido! Rolo, what did they do to you? Did you mean me drink some sort of green crud? Ew! Actually, I wasn't too bad. It tasted like licorice. Ew! Passed out and woke up like us. And then I sort of... Smashed open my cage and escaped. Whoa, you smashed open a cage? Kinda. At least I think I did. That's all a bit of a blur. They had you in a cage? Who are these people? Don't know who did this to you, but we're gonna fix it. Fix it? This is awesome! Well, I'm just glad you're safe now. Luca, you don't need to worry about me. Sure, I got snatched, but look at it this way. I got snatched. Don't know where snatched people go. Did my family have a lead on what happened to your family? Maybe you're right, but this all seems dangerous. Danger, ha. <laughs> Rollo shadowboxed a few jabs. Okay, well, if the story finishes sooner than, like, midnight, we'll go back and just redo the little bits. Just so it's 100% video. 
if it goes on for longer, then we won't. I'll peek them all on. Hey, fellas, what's up? We say up? yelp. Rollo dove behind Luca. Ah! Take cover. Did I come at a bad time? Who the heck are you? This is Beck. Sorry, something truly bizarre just happened and I need help. Don't know where else to go. So you're just hanging out here with your large adult friend? Ah, uh, no, this is my buddy Rollo. This is your missing friend? One and the same. He seems a little... Old. I'll have you know this is a recent development. What the heck does that mean? Oh, I'm sorry, you're the one who just showed up out of nowhere. So we'll be asking the questions here. That's fair. How'd you find us? Silly little trios. I think you mean our silly little mission control. Hate to break it to you, but your secret path isn't so secret. And I could hear your racket from a mile away. See, Luca, this is why we need to improve security around here. Not now, Rollo. Becky said something bizarre happened. Yeah, but... She shot a nervous glance at Rollo. Anything you can say around me, you can say around Rollo. This has been a weird day all around, hasn't it? Yep. Beck's eyes narrowed. Okay, so it all started when I made it back home. My first order of business was to try and salvage my hair. So I dyed it with some stuff from the chemistry step my mum gave me. Oh yeah, because she got splashed with the green goo and it made her hair go white. Okay, just need to play it cool. Hope no one notices. Notices what? Oh, nothing. It was just... Oh, come over here and let me have a look. Oh, honey, what in the world did you do to your hair? I, I just kind of felt like a change. This is going to take forever to grow out. You're the one who said that change was a good thing, right? I was talking about your mother's new job. I was talking about us moving. Well, I guess I just took your lesson to heart. Ilona tried to put on a smile. Before I forget, I came up here to tell that Nellie had to go into work. Tonight? Her and Mr. Kerr decided it would be good for her to get some things done before tomorrow. That Kerr guy seems like a grade A creep. Beck! He is! Him and his were a cult of personality. You are not going to ruin this job for Nellie. It means too much to her. Oh, I know exactly how much it means to her. Means enough to her to exile her daughter to this podunk town. This place sucks. People are weird. You just don't know them yet. It's always cold. We're in the mountains, you'll get used to it. Can't even pick up a single decent station on the radio. It's all banjo music and farm reports. You know, I grew up in a town not that different from this one. Is that why you're better at talking to plants than people? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. First of all, you're grounded. In the morning, I'll have Nelly come and see what we can do about fixing your hair. You need to look presentable for the festival. But not another peep. She sighed, and after a moment, looked down at Beck sympathetically. I know moving is hard, honey. But that doesn't mean you have to make yourself miserable all the time. Other people seem to have that covered for me. Oh, and if you decide to rebel by dyeing your hair more... She flashed a sly grin and tussled Beck's hair. I'll just save it off for you. Think of how rebellious you look then. Very funny. Thank you. Good night, sweetie. Good night, Mum. She has two mums, it's awesome. And it's just there. There's just two mums. It's like not even an issue. I love it so much. Wee wee wee. First of all, this town does not suck. Second, you need help because you got grounded? No. I'm sorry you got in trouble. It's my fault your hair got screwed up in the first place. Ah, oh, don't worry about it. Actually, I kind of like this look. Great. Can we get back to the story now? The next part is the important bit. I have this radio I upgraded with my mum, and I was too angry to sleep, so I tried to dial into something worth listening to. Mr. Kerr, Mr. Kerr, there. Mr. Kerr? Yes, I'm busy. What is it? Apologies, I have the founder on the line. Patch him through immediately. One moment. Hello, sir. It's so nice to hear from you. Skip the pleasantries. What's your report on our new lead researcher of deep engineering? Nellie Modwell seems to be integrating nicely. This very moment, she's working to help us meet our deadline. 
She offered to work overtime before I even have the chance to suggest it. Excellent. And you have faith that she's capable of finishing the work left by, work left by her predecessor. Her work must be complete before the festival. I will make sure she stays day and night until it's accomplished. Good. You know how I feel about loose ends. Yes, sir. Once she's finished the work, we need to make a de determination regarding her long-term prospects in the company. Immediately, sir. I usually have more time to fully bring people into the field. We're on the end game, Bill. After your failures with Dr. Prescott, I can't afford to take any risks. Of course, sir. No loose ends, sir. Once she finishes the work, she will either leave the office completely committed to perennial harvest, or she won't leave at all. Perfect. So, if I might suggest, maybe she'd delay just for a bit. Oh. It's just we seem to be rushing to hit this festival deadline, and rushing into things has caused some, um, issues in the past. I see. Please understand that I just want what's best for you. I'm eternally grateful for all that you've done for me. Well, I make this very clear for you. I brought you in to make things run smoothly, and not to have opinions. Of course, sir. Chin up, Bill. You're only a few days away from having everything you ever dreamed of. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Whoa. Yeah. So we're clear when they said loose ends, they were talking about murder, right? Like actually killing someone. Capital murder. Luca gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs. Who is this founder? I was hoping you guys would know. Nah, as far as we know, Curtis the top banana at putting your harvest. We sounded scared of this founder guy, so we haven't even top a banana in the field. What the hell is my mum caught up in? Has she talked about the job match? Not really. She said she was going to come in and continue the work of someone she respected. Luca, do you think that body at the warehouse was... The person's mum, Beck's mum, came to replace. That would make sense. Becca seems like uh, Nelly's predecessor got um, descended. Getting that impression. Okay, so we need to get your mum out of there before the festival happens. Ask two days a week, won't she just come home after work? The creep on the radio said they were going to hold her there until then. Also, if she's not coming out, we've got to go in and Beck get her. flicked a large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. Maybe this will help. You have blueprints? Well, it's really just a welcome map for my mum's PH orientation day. But it shows the layout. Sure looks like blueprints to me. Okay, so the reception area has a big room marked founder's office. Even as the exit's marked. Guys, guys, guys! We have a deadline, we have an objective, we have blueprints! You realise what this is, right? I started to wiggle with excitement. I think we're heisting. This is officially a heist. It's Ocean's 3! Chapter 6. The Heist. The Heist. Okay, we need a very small break. I need to put the heating on. My nose is cold. Or I need to get a water bottle. I need to get a water bottle. So, we will come back to the heist in a few minutes. Oh. I want to some hot tea. I think I need hot tea. So, take this time to either commune with the void, to stretch, hydrate, get food. self-care tablets reminder if you need to do anything and i will be back momentarily well i say momentarily i'll be back three four minutes probably you know enough time to go make a cup of tea go to the bathroom possibly make a hot water bottle i could put the heating on but sometimes you just need a hot water bottle so i'll be back in a bit
Hey, Colonus. Sorry, you came during the tea break. I was just getting myself a cup of tea and a hot water bottle because my nose is cold. <laughs> so yes, we are now in chapter six, the height. They spent the night's end huddled around that small map, formulating a plan to infiltrate the headquarters of perennial harvest. It would be no small feat. A modern facility equipped with all manner of technology. Not to mention the swarm of clipboards that would most certainly be scattered throughout. By the time the sun began to peek through the car window used as a makeshift balcony door, all were in agreement. This could just work. The final day before the festival would be used to prepare. Just kind of very quickly send a quick email while this they is. They need to pull every resource yeah. at their disposal, pull every favor with a thread. I just remembered I hadn't scheduled a thing. Right, I have scheduled the thing. What? Oh, I'm sure what are you doing? Lessons. Sorry. Right, there's also one more thing I have to do. And I was like, I need to do this and this. Oh! I was supposed to do washing today. I did not. There was also something you else I was supposed to do. some unsavory do characters around town with important tasks only they were suited really, yeah. for. Luckily, there was enough ill will and mistrust toward perennial harvest that alliances could be found at a bargain. Yeah, I'm sure everyone is. Luca, Beck, and Rollo rubbed their eyes as they exited the treehouse. They hadn't slept at all that night. There was no time. The festival was to begin in one day, and they each had their assignments. Let me go back into the treehouse. All right, quick recap. Rolo, you're going to touch Roxy. Cordially. Without her and Fitz, this whole thing could go bust. What is Roxy going to say that her brother is suddenly an adult? Me? Cold yells in my middle name. Uh-huh. Beacon Pines is awesome. We are currently... Up here on the Malice route, this I feel is like going towards Endgame. <sighs> End of the story. Um, we may have three more trapped chapters, possibly. Um, I don't know. Feels like we're getting some answers. It's awesome. It's on Game Pass. If you haven't played it, I highly recommend. Uh huh. And how do you plan to explain your new um, at Rollo's sizable figure? Circumstance. Bash, to be so happy I'm alive, she won't even notice. Beck snorted an involuntary giggle. <laughs> and Beck, you're sure Elena won't just shoot this whole thing down once she gets it? She'll listen. Once she understands the danger now he's in, the danger we're all in, the plan will make sense. Okay. That just leaves me with Jeff and then Iggy. How are you going to persuade them? 
I'll think of something. They each looked at each other with sleepy confidence and nodded. Well, Godspeed. Alright, I'm just gonna see if I can go back in here. Enlist the help of Jack. Enlist the help of Iggy and Tish. Luca looked up at the satellite dish. I know, I know. He killed himself putting that up into the tree. Oh! While it right. didn't turn the radio into an interstellar communicator, as he'd hoped, it did at least boost the signal enough to overhear truckers one town over. Okay. So that got pull. So we can detour to do that in the fishing thing. We're still missing cling, which I don't know whether we'll be able to get. Luca tied a small magnet to the line, fishing with the law of attraction. But as I said, again, we couldn't. Um... Go back and uh, get that. Depending on when we finish the story, either on stream or not. Oh, we got a key. Where do you think the lock is for this key? Now, why would we want to find that? Because then we would know the secret. Ah, it's no fun. The second we know what it unlocks, it just becomes a boring old key. Right now, this key could unlock anything. Cool. Looks like we could use some new bait. What to say we head out and find some? There is always a small chance. Undaunted, he shook his head. Over? No. Endings are merely a state of mind. This doesn't end until I give up. Wow. My, the conviction. Can you really pull through? Hells yeah. Yeah, so there was someone outside the History Museum. Which I thought we'd talk to them. But obviously, they were only there for a particular bit of time. And that is not now the time. So, that's fine. Um, honestly, I don't actually know where Iggy and Tish and Jeff are. I don't actually know which Jeff is. <laughs> right now, I am very bad with names. It would help if it would give me an approximate location. Otherwise, kind of assuming. But yeah, I have a whole bunch of games that I want to play. Just trying to make time to put them in. You ever wonder why an agricultural company employs an army of survey takers? The clipboards, they just, uh, they're just trying to make us happy. Do they want to make us happy? Or just to figure out what makes us happy? Important distinction. Aha! Hey, Jeff! What can I do you for? Well, I know how much you hate perennial harvest. Heat's a strong word. Oh, sorry, I mean, I didn't see it was the wrong word. Gotcha. So we're going to break into the headquarters, and I thought you might be able to help. Jeff wheezed out a long snicker. Ha! <laughs> yeah, see, I knew your kids were all right. Great, so you help. The joy in Jeff's face drained instantly. Not a chance. But... You want good reason? I should dress my hide eating in a betting Looking into the sullen eyes of his would-be accomplice, Luca blurted out the first word that came to mind. Oh my god! I've got five! Well, I mean, he likes junk. That'll be my first choice. Junk! Yeah, what of it? Sonny, I got more junk than a king of copper. Ain't interested. Okay, do we try again? Luca wasn't ready to give up so easily. He shouted out again. Shit! <laughs> yeah, it's all shite. Still ain't open. Ain't that some shite? <laughs> hide? Jeff's brow perked up. What'd you see? Go ahead and hide Sensing then. Sensing some traction, Luca carried on with vigor. 
Let a bunch of kids do what needs to be done. I'm not afraid. Scowl faded with a sigh. See what you're all about, old Jeff, and all they do. You never hear him say I hid from One nothing. One good stomp of the foot was all Jeff needed to drive his point home. What was it your kids needed? Just some sort of disguise? Got just the thing. And while we're at it, that crate would come in handy. I think gonna be free, you know. Thinking five bags of sour gobs should cover it. Put it on my tab. Luca offered out his open hand to seal the deal. With a firm and dusty grip, Jeff reciprocated. Done. Swing my first thing in the morning. That was easy. Now we have to find the bullies. Where would I be if I were a bully? Ah, there, apparently. Hey, Tish! Look who it is. Look here to try and tickle us to death again. Look, just hear me Icky out. raised an eyebrow suspiciously. We're listening. Icky, I know we've bred in giant bags of, uh... Shit to each Iggy other. He gave a reluctant shrug. Ow. Yeah, not wrong. But lately life has been kind of strange, you know? Iggy considered the point. Things have been weird around here. So I'm offering a truce and asking for your help. What do you say we break our hostilities, at least for now? We do like breaking things. Even if a truce means less breaking things. What if I told you there was a way to have a truce and break stuff? Go on. I need you to cause a distraction so I can sneak into Perennial Harvest HQ. A wild-eyed grin spread across Iggy's face. My, my, Luca Van Horn, I'm impressed. After this is all done, maybe you and Tish can come out and hang out at the treehouse sometime. Iggy glanced over to Tish, who nodded in agreement. Fine. But not because we want to see you crack tree treehouse. We just like to cause With a chaos. Quick nod, Luca was off. That was easy. Did you Iggy hear that, Tish? Up at Tish with a smile. He invited us to hang out at the trio. A single tear ran down Tish's cheek. I never expected this day to come. How wonderful. Oh, I never expected to say an entire sentence. Chapter 7. Into the Hive. A good heist requires preparation. And thorough preparation takes time, something they had precious little of. So far, everything was in order. Jeff, Iggy, and Tish all agreed to do their part. Beck radioed Luca that night with a simple and covert message. We are locked and loaded on my end. And Rolo, after a lengthy confession, managed to persuade Roxy and Fitz to help. He stowed away in mission control for the night to avoid attracting attention. Rolo, being uniquely suited for the role, would be the first to breach perennial harvest. The outfit provided by Jeff wasn't perfect, but a convincing disguise is 10% wardrobe, 90% confidence. What is he dressed up as? Rolo took a few vigorous breaths and shook out his arms. Just stay calm, Rolo, you can do this. We're in a crate! Got your delivery here. A delivery? Hmm, I don't have anything in my notes about delivery. One moment. I'm so sorry, but there's no delivery schedule for this morning. Sorry. He had to think quick. That's because this goes directly to the founder. He asked that I'd be kept secret. Low side, adjusting his tool belt. You know how the founder can be. I suppose we can leave this one off the records. I wonder if it's a harvest awaits. With a stroke of his mustache, Rollo proceeded into the perennial harvest headquarters. Has he got two two kids in the in, in the crate? A harvest awaits. Package here for the founder. Oh, I didn't hear anything about. Yeah, this is a need to know kind of thing. I'll just he check. He stammered and flipped through the pages of his clipboard. This goes directly to the founder. Don't have time to fill you in. 
Oh, I, I see if you could just complete this form. interrupted with urgency in his voice. Every time with the forms. Look, if you want to explain to the founder why I'm late. Well, that's your funeral. Ah, I'm sorry. Uh, what did you say your name again? Oh, oh, I'm panicked. A harvester wheat. Sir, that's a restricted area. Excuse me, sir. Oh, harvester wheat! Ready to light this candle, Tush? Yep. Suck on this perennial ham first. Fist, fist. I did find the fireworks. What was the that? distraction was enough for Rollo to regain his confidence. Just open the damn door. I got a job the to do. The clipboard fumbled around in a frenzy. I, um, I should check on that noise. Oh, come on. Just buzz me in already. Oh, that was close. Yay! Two kids in a box. <laughs> Mr. Waits. Yeah, figure. One in doubt, stick with the classics. That was a close one. But you pulled it off. Nice work, Rollo. Alright, everyone knows what to do. Yeah, deep engineering is to north. Aqua's back. Keisha needs some muscle. Oh, <laughs> Rollo is so adorable. I'll head east to the founder's office. You two be safe. Locate the founder's office. That's odd. Not even any cups for the water. Hmm. This whole place just feels fake, but of all things, a fake plant. Solomon? Solomon stopped in his tracks. Luca, what are you doing here? It's a long story. Are you okay? A veneer of confusion mm. flashed across Solomon's face. His words rushed out dramatically. No, I'm most certainly not okay. Some, someone, some strange people grabbed me and... <gasps> were they in hazmat suits? Yes, how did you know? They brought me here and locked me up and when they were distracted I ran. Dang, okay, you should stick with me. We've got a plan. Solomon's facade briefly faltered. We? we? Yeah, Rollo and Becca headed to deep engineering. Thank heavens you found me. We've got to get out of here. We can't leave just yet, but they'll catch us again. We've got to do something first. When you were running, did you happen to see a doormat founder? Founder? Why are you looking for him? I'm not. I just need to get into that office. Now that you mention it, I, 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 I do think a door, I saw a door that said founder. It was just down this way. to notice a plaque above the door. Office of the founder. Knocking comes with consequence. Oh, here it is. God, Solomon can't say anything without revealing that he's actually Shop of Valentine. So it is. Pretty lucky that I ran into you, else I might have missed it. Truly fortunate. Luca tried the handle. Lost. Solomon leaned forward to examine the mechanism. Regrettably, it seems to be some sort of electric lock. I don't see how you, how we could possibly defeat a lock like that. Luca smiled and looked at his watch. Let's just wait a minute. She's gonna kill the electrics. Ha! <laughs> Elena! Ah, don't know what sort of funny business you're up to, but I like she it. She mined a quick hat tip and ambled off with a whistle. Yeah, that pig guy, they basically, he lives in the house at the back and they've been building into his view. The light on the keypad changed from red to green. <gasps> How did you do that? It's good to have friends. Quick, let's get inside before someone spots us. Well, they won't have a problem with Solomon. Sigh. Luca switched on his walkie-talkie. Merlo, I'm in. As, as expected, there's a control panel. Great timing, we're stuck at a locked door marked number 24601. Need you to get us through. What if someone catches us? We should get out of here. Not leaving my friend, Solomon. On the computer screen, a green cursor blinked in a password field. Surely you don't have a way to get around the password. Luca hmm. pecked out his best guess. Underground secrets. 
The screen blinked to life. Column <laughs> screen numbers glowed on a black background. How did you just guess that? Oh, I don't know. We, we heard it somewhere. Is this observed password Rolo had when he was down here before? It's funny how someone arrogant enough to call themselves the founder uses such a basic password. Oh, they were thinking several moves ahead, not expecting anyone to guess something so simple. These villain types always end up outsmarting themselves. Solomon's jaw clenched into a half smile. And your powers of deduction are as impressive as your luck. Luca quickly scanned the columns for number 24601. Rolo, I think this should do it. I mean, literally, there's a picture of Sharper and his kids on the wall. Bingo bango, dolls open, Luca, you never feel to impress. What is that slippery lout even doing down here? We have a friend whose mum is in trouble. We're here to get her out. I see. Oh, Luca, I think we're close. The next door's marked 13 or 6. Once again, Luca scrutinized the numbers on the screen. In that moment of distraction, Solomon reached forward and pressed a large red button. Maybe this opens the lock. No. Clap, we've got company. Luca must go faster. One sec, I can't think with all this noise. skimmed the screen with his finger. Here it is, 13806, go, go, go. Cast those fumbling hands. My apologies, Luca. Don't beat yourself up, I know you were just trying to help. They weren't. No, clipboards. Hmm. Oh man, no water cups. Rolo! Yeah, well, if people don't get a chance to play games, at least me streaming them helps. But also, I guess, with it being on Game Pass, I don't know whether it helps more to download and play it. No. Rolo, are you okay? Rolo, come in. Mr. Kerr approached with a sneer and spoke into his walkie-talkie. You can turn off the alarms, they're trapped. With self-satisfaction, he called into the hallway. That, my dears, is a dead end. Nowhere to run. Rolo, where are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I think we lost him. We can all be back to Nelly's office. Oh, excellent! It's the sister and the friends. They were a distraction. Oh, epic. Okay, you two rabble rousers are coming with us. Nope. I'm gonna kick you in the balls. Make a break for it! Did that little shit just kick me? Don't just stand there after them. Okay, I think that worked. Roxy and Fetz have them on a wild goose chase. I am having trouble following what just happened. Like I said, it's good to have friends. Rolo, how long do you think Roxy can distract them? How long can Roxy keep someone so pissed off they can't see straight? Let's just see we've got time. Entering Nelly's office now. Mum! Oh, honey, what did you do to your hair? I can't remember what it looked like before, so, you know. I thought you'd be happy. I finally used the young chemist lab kit. You sure have a knack for making me proud in the most frustrating ways. We need to get you out of here. Me, who is your adult friend? Oh, I'm not an adult. Adult. I ever heard of a growth spot? I had more of a growth spew. No, that's not possible. Nelly leaned over to examine his teeth. Substantial banding on the enamel of the molars. Molars consistent con consistent with Tempus liquine exposure. As of what you call the gunk they forced me to drink. You drank it, oh? I know. I told me it was only being tested on plants. Oh, Beck, sweetie, I promise I didn't know. Mum, what the hell is going on at this place? I was brought here to work on the discovery of a lifetime. A novel chemical compound was discovered under Beacon Hills in a wellspring they called the Source. They named it Tempus Liquamine. It pulls energy from its surroundings in order to fundamentally alter matter's relationship to time. It was the secret of Valentine's fertilizer. They harvested the Source, infusing small amounts of Tempus Liquamine into the product. It worked wonders, drastically accelerating plant growth. Crops would be ready to harvest in a fraction of the time. But it led to complications. The foul harvest. Perennial harvest came in to clean up the mess. The seed where Valentine failed. But Tempus Liquamine is rebellious. Rebellious? 
You can think of it as a manifestation of change itself. It's volatile by its very nature. The more you try and force it to do a specific thing, the more it resists, yes. I can relate to that. My role was to finish the work of my predecessor, Dr. Prescott, harnessing liquid, Tempus Liquamine to reliably manipulate an organism's age. Just imagine how many people we could feed. Mr. Kerr was very insistent that we achieve a successful result before today's festival. But you didn't, right? Nelly sighed. Uh, you know how much I love a good puzzle. I poured myself into the problem. It wasn't long until I discovered oddities in Dr. Prescott's notes. Oddities? They contained obvious errors. Because he didn't want them to succeed, that's why they killed him. Mistakes that someone of his reputation would never make. So I, I fixed them and, and, oh, and now I get to tell police my entire wardrobe. I really am truly sorry. Oh, he's caused war on how many towns anyway? Sounds like Dr. Prescott figured it out, got cold feet and intentionally sabotaged his own work. I had considered that possibility. I've sent a letter asking him to clarify his thinking. Mum, Dr. Prescott is dead. Yeah, I had him killed. What? I overheard them talking about it on the radio. That's why we got to get you out of here. I, I just... Like, now? Wait, the vial! I finally solved the chemical equation allowing direct control of aging. Mr. Kerr picked it up just before you came. All the more reason we got to hightail it. Look here, we've got to talk to Modwell, aging your way now. Roger that, be careful! Alright, everything's on track. And what is your plan for escape? We'll go over everything when they get here. In the meantime, maybe we can dig up some more info. I'm really sorry you got dragged into this mess, Solomon. You needn't worry about me. Well, I feel bad either way. We're gonna get you out of this, I With promise. a subtle, quivering lip, a smile crawled across Solomon's face. Malice, 80% proof whiskey. Hard drink for a hard man. What if he needs Solomon alcohol as I Solomon inaudibly. I should just smother you right now. What's that? I said I shouldn't bother you right now. Don't be silly, you're no bother at all. See what else this bad boy has on it. Security system, time card logs, payroll. For being so evil, this guy sure is boring. Solomon once again muttered under his breath. Just you wait. Huh? Oh, nothing. Luca tugged on each of the cabinets. Dang, this must be the good stuff. They're all locked. Perhaps it's not as careless as you suspected. Oh, there'll be a key somewhere. Like the founder was helping Pl Care plan the festival. Why would a secretive leader be so obsessed with a party? Only time will tell. Luca held his hand up to the ashtray. Still warm. They must have been in here recently. They heard the trampling of frantic footsteps from the hallway. Lock it, lock it, lock it, lock it. Locked. Is there a secret door out? That was close. When we left Nelly's office, I was swarming with clipboards. We barely got away. Did they follow you? Yeah. Rolo. Before we start tossing gleam around. It is possible someone is it possible someone ordered a pizza? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Definitely not pizza. What now? Don't look at me, I'm officially a time from the asking business. You retire when you get out! We're so sorry for the inconvenience. We just have a few quick questions. Just let me think. Can someone watch the door? Of course. He's gonna open it. Everyone else huddle up. Oops. I think this little caper has gone on long enough. Summon, no! Hush now, child. The adults are speaking. Dr. Maud, well, a brief reintroduction is in order. We've never met in person, but we have corresponded. You see, it was I who hired you. Solomon, the pathetic orphan child, the powerful and enigmatic founder. Sharper, the fallen progenitor who created this town. Perennial harvest valentine fertilizer. All connected by a single thread, yours truly. But that's... Her eyes searched the floor in thought. Solomon watched eagerly, waiting for the flicker of epiphany. With a sickened look, she peered into his soul. Ah, yes, now you've got it. Tempest Liquamine, you discovered how to reverse the process. Solomon clapped with genuine delight. Very good, Dr. Modwell, very good. Though the discovery wasn't intentional. Solomon glanced down, examining his youthful form. Mm, the effects went a little too far for my tests. 
That's why you needed me to finish Dr. Prescott's work. Won't you do it admirably? Mr. Care the vial, please. Kerr presented it with a theatrical twirl of the hand. May I present you the eight form that could finish, the... Rollo snatched the vial from Kerr's palm. Wow, this stuff seems sounds pretty valuable. Be careful, you fool. You have no idea what you have in your hand. Actually, we do. You just did a whole evil villain monologue thing thingy about Rolo it. Rollo casually tossed the vial to Luca. Gosh, maybe I'll have a taste. Luca jiggled the vial mockingly. Seize him. Luca, over here. Move another inch and I smash it. She held it tightly behind her back. Solomon sighed, speaking in crisp, measured syllables. You have no plan. I'll smash it, I swear. Fine, risk killing us all. Or if you're lucky, nothing happens, then what? We capture you and grant you much less leniency. He pursed his lips with feigned sincerity. When I give you my word, if you hand it over now, none of you will be A deep uncertainty washed over Beck. You're a smart girl, Beck. There's no shame in being outwitted by someone smarter than you. You both know there's only one way this ends. She looked to Nellie shakily. With a dispirited nod, Nellie sighed in defeat. Beck slowly approached Solomon. That's a good girl. Beck, don't do it. We can't trust that jerk. Sorry, he's right. With apprehension, Beck conceded. Solomon pocketed the vial and brushed off his shoulder with a sharp flick. Mr. Care, you've allowed yourself to be humiliated by a group of children. Report to my office tomorrow for, for, for a performance review. The blood drained from Kerr's face. Mm, of course, sir. But first, you have a speech to make. Trot out there and give me the introduction I deserve. Don't forget to smile. Yes, sir. And to think all of this is thanks to the effort of Mr. Van Horn. You don't understand. How is that all because of me? Ha, I said Mr. Van Horn, silly child. Dr. Walt Van Horn. Your father was always a thorn in my side. I offered him an opportunity to be a part of something great. But the fool was blinded by righteousness. It's not likely that Nat is actually his dad and who got reverse-aged. Is it? No. His dad had antlers. That was a mouse. I'm assuming there was a body they buried. I don't know. Maybe it turns out his dad's actually alive somewhere. Hmm. He broke into my laboratory in an attempt to sabotage Solomon my work. shook his head with gratification. The universe is a funny way of correcting course. By meddling with a force he didn't understand, Walt showed me his true potential. As fate would have it, Luke, your father's dying act was to grant me eternal life. A muffled applause resonated faintly through the walls. Oh, so he definitely is dead. I'm so sorry. Well, that's my cue. After this, it is in my subsequent ascension, I will return to deal with you all. Until then, I suggest you use this time to reflect on the magnitude of your failure. You three, keep post outside the door. You're leaving them in the office with the control panel. An unlimited time to break into filing cabinets and get evidence. Oh, crap. I can't believe Becca sort us out like that. I'm not sure she had any other choice. So what now? What's the plan? Don't have one. Of course you do. You always have a plan. Yeah. You just need some time. Well, it's over. We lost. Hey. I'm sorry, Luca. I did what I had to do. I know. It's just we were so close. Got a feeling that eventually Solomon will get what's coming to him. Time heal wounds all heals. Well, time seems less of an issue for him now. Luca, there's something you should know. After Mr. Kerr Mr. Kerr locked me in the office, I had nothing but time and curiosity. I poked around a bit, hoping to find a means of escape, but I found something else. A note hidden in a false drawer. What sort of note? Dr. Prescott must have sensed his time at perennial harvest was growing short. So he left behind a letter with the hope it would be found by his successor. 
It was a confession of sorts. They left it for me, but its content... Lucre, I think they were meant for you. Why? What did it say? It's about an incident with your mother. Dr. Prescott found her in his lab with the stolen keycard. It was an accident. She'd been exposed to extreme amounts of tempest nicotine. The colour dropped from Luca's face. Did she... Is she... She survived? Dr. Prescott decided to help her recover. He no longer trusted perennial harvest, so he kept her whereabouts a secret. Over time, your mother led him to reconsider the purpose of scientific discovery. <coughs> Science is often at the vanguard of change, but that doesn't mean it's always right. He realised no one should have control over something as powerful as time itself. Now I believe that's why he began to intentionally sabotage his own work. <coughs> and it cost him his life. It's a reasonable conclusion. Luca was overwhelmed with emotion. Yeah, we don't know Gran is mom at this point. Different timeline. But this one is kind of messed up unless they can de-age Rolo. And mom. But I figure, you know, consequences. But if she's alive, where has she been? Where is she now? A sudden explosion sounded from the hall. I think she's there. Chapter 8. Yay. Comeuppance. Ears still ringing, Gran picked herself up off the ground. Through the dust and smoke, she looked over to see Mrs. Fratelli helping Hiram Tolliver to his feet. She'd had to beg, borrow, and steal to acquire those explosives. How many nights had she spent visualizing how she'd use them to make things right? And now, her one shot at destroying the source, that damned hole that swallowed so much of her life, was gone. Yeah, but you skipped destroying the entire universe, so it was good. Traded for this jagged hole in a wall and a foolhardy shot at rescuing Rollo. And your son and everyone else. With Fratelli and Tolliver at her side, she stepped through. It was a strange feeling. The last time she'd stalked this maze of hallways, it was in a different body. They quickly rounded a corner to find a group of clipboards guarding a door. Something worth guarding is probably something worth seeing. She leapt forward, brandishing her cane. If her last chance at vengeance for things lost was truly gone, she would just have to fight to keep what she still had. Speak of the devil. Hi, Mum. Hi, Mrs. Fortelli and Mr. Tolliver. Gran, what are you doing here? Luca, what are you doing here? We're here to save Nelly. We're here to save Rolo. You, Mrs. Lucas, Gran. It's all for nice here. But I'm fine. Oh no, what did they? Gran, there's no time to explain. We have to go now. Come on, everyone, we've got a party to crash. They made their way out from deep within perennial harvest, just as Solomon finished up his speech. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here on out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. We've got to stop In him. In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. Oh, I guess that's it. We lost. I'm so sure about that. Oh, what did you do? Back elbowed Luca. You switched the vials back. Remember when I had the vial behind my back? I might have tweaked this wonder potion with a little... Oh, oh, oh. Oh. With a little malice. I think. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little malice. <gasps> the whiskey from his office. Yeah, dude, that's an unfinished glass on his desk. Figured his grow juice could use a little hair of the dog. You can all call me Sharper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. Ew, that does not look good. That sounds like popcorn. Confetti! Now that's what I call 
80% poof whiskey. Damn, dude. Yay, pop goes the weasel. The crowd yeah. gazed in stunned silence at the now empty stage. The quiet was broken when William Kerr sprinted off stage and into the distance. He was never seen around Beacon Pines or anywhere else for that matter again. Watching the silhouette of Kerr disappear over the horizon, Luca began to laugh. First, a low chuckle that became uncontrolled, heaving laughter. Through his tears, he was vaguely aware that the crowd had begun to laugh with him. The end. That was... unexpected. Perhaps a bit of an absurd ending for my taste, but who am I to say? I'm only writing the damn thing. Okay. Let's try junk first. I feel like change is probably the answer. Wonder potion with a little junk. Can't wait to see the look on his face when he realizes he drank his own cigar ash. How did ashes get into the vial? Pretty easy to mess with the vial when it's behind my back. Oh, that's sneaky. Well, that's a bad habit anyways. Pat always says bad habits are like 50 yard field goals. Huh? Hard to kick. <laughs> You can all call me Sharp of Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. Ash. Blew away. Bye-bye. Well, that's one week to kick a bag of habit. As the last of what was once sharper Valentine wafted into the air, the crowd began to disperse, still numb from what they had just observed. Sharper Valentine was gone for good. His end would be a new beginning for Beacon Pines, a new chance to let go of the things they had lost and grab hold of a new future. The end. Well... I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a bit gratifying. If that feels to you like a good note to end on, I won't stand in your way. The vile vile. Let's tweak it with change. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little change. Like pocket change? Your unlucky penny. Yeah, I plopped it in the vial when I was looking. What's that gonna do? No idea. That's the beauty of science. Now we observe. You can all call me Sharp His Valentine. body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. He became a baby. I thought that was gonna happen. Holy crap, he's a BB. Yeah, but he's still sharper, right? Ah, <sighs> what he was was no longer matters. This is an innocent child. I apologize for the harm my uh, father has caused Eris you. Eris awkwardly cradled the squirming child. She looked to her brother, her voice shaking with uncertainty. And Augustus, what do we? We do what Valentines always do. What must be done. I'll hurry home and prefer a crib for father, um, young Sharper. That would be a great help, she thank you. She looked back down at the infant with equal parts kindness and terror in her eyes. Maybe you could, you know... Mm, with a shake not. of her head, Eris addressed the crowd with a stern scowl. Okay, everyone, the show's over. You may leave now. Epilogue. Hmm. Beacon Pines' coldest summer on record came and went without much fanfare. Folks shared what they had and none were left wanting. The new school year was ushered in by the falling leaves of autumn. After everything Luca, Rollo, and Beck had been through, middle school was bearable. The chill of winter didn't seem to bother people much. They kindled a hope for a better future in their hearts. When spring arrived, farmers planted their crops with a sense of joy and optimism. And as the dawn of the first day of summer came again, its light slowly spread through the shallow valley. 
It crept over the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, and came to rest on a young boy sleeping at dawn. His mind at peace, knowing he is here for a reason. <laughs> We're putting on our jumper in summer. Good, good, good. Rolo, you up yet? Yeah. Roger that. That's a beautiful day at Mission Control. You gonna swing by? Be there in a minute. Mom, I'm ready to go now. You go on without me, I'll meet you there. Got a batch of jam to finish drying. It's funny. I only started making jam as a way to send messages without anyone noticing. But now I enjoy it. They moved an entire tree. Oh, they must have moved the fake graveyard. <laughs> Heard you and Rolo have big plans for that little tree house. Yeah, it started getting crowded after we revoked the max capacity one Rolo, one Nooka rule. So we decided to expand. At least we've got some help with that. How's the internship at Nelly and Yuna's shop going? It's pretty great. I'm hoping it keeps something gets get me in. I'm uh, hoping it helps me get into the school of ab agriculture up at Steep. Also, Nelly said she'd write a letter of recommendation, which would be huge. Can't help but worry about leaving Rollo. He's grown up so fast, but he's still my little brother. Yeah, he had a heck of a growth spurt. I don't mean grown, literally. This morning he was up and finished his chores before I even had breakfast. Some of that might be his excitement about the treehouse renovations. Don't tell him this, because it'll go to his head, but I'm really proud of that little punk. I'm sure he feels the same way, but he's just too damn proud to tell you. I know. Does this go up somewhere? No. Hey guys, how's the tree planting going? Couldn't be better. So grateful to Elena and Ellie for helping me help. I just wasn't built to be mayor. Too much bureaucracy. Guess we finished cleaning up the sidewalks. What's when next? perennial harvest collapsed, most of the clipboards skipped town, but some stuck around and dedicated themselves to making things right. Oh. Anyone with a knack for art can help paint the new offices. You can count on us. But it looks like you really found your calling. Never really felt comfortable telling people what to do. Now this right here. This is something I can be proud of. Kind of cute. How's the napping this morning? Most underrated part of a good nap is the view. The view's getting greener every day. Nice. So you decided on a name? Yes, we had to clear out all the old stuff before putting on the final touch. Slow and dirty harvest is now official. I like it. It's actually Nelly's idea. Well, there's still a lot of work to do and the name serves as a reminder. Just because progress is important doesn't mean change should happen fast. In fact, I've learned that the more you care about something, the more important it is to take things slow. Our motto is go slow and fix things. Amen to that. I'm not dilly dally, gotta get to the treehouse. Okay, fine. I wanted to see if I could explore the rest of the town. We didn't get any more new words. We know where the other one is. <gasps> a little higher. Yup. A little lower. Yup. A little higher. <laughs> yup. I'm telling you. Angle isn't the issue. 
We need more power to the radio. Look at there, yeah. Would you tell him it's not the angle? I am not in charge of antenna redesign. Fine, fine. Iggy, just don't do anything drastic until we get back. Who, me? Tess, you're in charge while I'm gone. Yep. I'll be fine, right? I'll be fine. But we really want mission control to turn into something bigger and better. We have to loosen our grip a little bit. Ugh, you're right. Need the wee. Checking with Beck at her house. Excellent. Oh, excuse me. Young Mr. Van Horn. How's little Solomon uh, Sharper doing? Young Sharper do seems to enjoy nature more than I. So we do a lot of strolling these days. Has he, um, you know, attempted to crawl out of his crib and plot world domination? Yeah. Thankfully, no. I spoke at length with Dr. Mo Modwell, Modwell. She feels that Sharper's infant mind was not developed enough to retain his previous memories. For all intents and purposes, the child is unmoulded clay. Let's hope he's a little nicer the second time around. That is the objective, yes. But really, all I can do is try and hope. Two activities I'm endeavouring to find less distasteful. I mean, you're basically mothering your own father. One, I guess, expects to do that as a child as they get, like, you know, old and senile. But not literally. <laughs> I think you're doing a great job. And the whole town is ready to help out however we can. Can't wait to teach him to throw a baseball. Eris did her best to ignore the tears welling in her eyes. That would be acceptable. He looked to his friends with a thankful smile. After everything that could have gone wrong, everything that did go wrong, we made it. Closing her eyes, Miss Hatch took a deep, relaxing breath. Oh, hello, Luca. How are you? Really good, actually. That's wonderful. Did I miss anything? I think you're pretty much up to speed. Hey, the sharper thing went. Wow, back for seconds. But he's not too much trouble. For the longest time, I didn't understand the appeal of ice cream. It serves no purpose, other than to be briefly enjoyed and then it's gone. But it's pretty tasty while it lasts. I'm inclined to agree. Hey, Luca, can you tell Roxy I'll be free in an hour? Sure thing. My dad's making me stock the shelves for the summer. He said it's Bill's character. He meant to say it builds calluses. Bill's character. Yeah, it builds something, all right. No, oh, Mr. Tolliver. Luca, can I interest you in a delicious He playfully waggled an apple. No, thanks. Just saying hello. Well, hello, then. Mind telling your mum we need a new crate of jam? Already? It's funny I used to hide this stuff in the back. Terrified that someone would find out about our secret messages. Now everyone wants to get their hands on Eleanor Horn's, Van Horn's famous spy jam. Hmm. And if you haven't already got the kicking achievement, which I got last time, you can kick the watermelon. It gives you kick. No, it gives you slap, I think. It gives you one of the actions, put it that way. What's today's news that needs knowing? Give you tomorrow's headline today. Our friend Patrice Montesquieu, aka William Kerr, just performed a stirring rendition of The Yes Man Cometh at the State Correctional Facility. I hear there wasn't a dry eye in the house. I guess he has plenty of time to work on his craft. Last chance, Diner. Oh, I'm glad you swung by. More follow up questions for your story? No, I got everything I need. Thanks for that. I said to draft the story to report in Capital City. And you offered me an internship. Of course they did. You're an amazing reporter. I don't know about all that. A story about a phony corporation that picked up an entire town of people, moved them to cover up a massive illegal mine shaft, full of incredibly hazardous chemicals. It sort of writes itself if you think about it. Don't just don't forget us when you become a big fancy city reporter. Capital City isn't that far away. Gonna have to come back from time to time to check in. See what sort of new trouble you've got yourself into. Sorry to disappoint me, my adventuring days are over. Ha, <laughs> we both know that's not true. What makes you say that? Call it a reporter's intuition. Ah, Beacon, Beacon Pines too. He 
Mrs. Fratelli's oh, Mrs. load with a carefree smile. Is that your suitcase? Ah, that's two weeks of unencumbered tranquility. Excuse me? Would you be so kind as to take my order? Two weeks of sand, margaritas, forgotten um, obligations. Excuse me, I'd love to place an order. Mrs. Fratelli sighed with a zen-like calm. Just as soon as the lunch rush ends, be a feather on the wind. You're going on vacation for the first time in years. I've got you and your mum to thank. Why's that? She didn't tell you yet? You two are going to fill in for me at the din diner while I'm gone. Just like old times. Fine, I'll wait. Oh, that's cool. Yes, people deserve a vacation. This is basically talk to everybody, say goodbye to everyone, say hello to everyone. Oop, we need to go to the cafe before we go off to the right. Say hi to whoever this is. Look, could you want a bit Scotty on the house? Don't really have time. Sorry, Al, you gotta come see this. I finally did her. I pulled the perfect espresso. Oh, Lou, me. Didn't know better. I would think you're proud of something. <laughs> I say fight. No. It's too late. You're now officially a person that cares. <laughs> okay, it was worth it for that interaction. That was cute. Oh no, we already talked to this, didn't we? What is our thing? Oh, checking with back, yeah. I mean, we would go back and tell the sister that we're that her friend's only going to be an hour. Why are there so many bunnies over there? Do I want to know why there are so many bunnies? <sighs> over the school year, Kato and Bert had become close friends. But did you know that when they covered up the source, they found a new species of fungus? And they're studying it in the new labs. Did you know that? Beacon Pines is now the smallest town in the county. Yeah, close to the population before perennial harvest moved it in. It typically went on like this for quite some time. I love it. I approve. Can't believe it's over. Yeah, the town's really starting to turn new leaf. Town was talking about Hank Atomic. Just finished the last issue. How was it? Great as always. Hank finally returned to Earth. But I just feel weird now. Weird can be cool. Just means you're ready for something new. Any suggestions? Did I ask Miss, Miss Hatch about what she's already always reading? She seems to really enjoy it. Hmm, maybe I'll do that. I think that's the insect kid. Did we find Nat? Because that was random. Luca peeked over Piper's shoulder. Laid stealthily inside a large volume of mathematics was the first issue of Hank Atomic. Piper, are you reading Hank Atomic? Do you mind not telling anyone? I've kind of got a reputation to uphold. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Just about every kid in town reads Hank, Hank Atomic. Honestly, I'm excited for you. What a gift to start over fresh. Experience it again for the first time. I guess that's the downside of finishing something nice. At least now I can enjoy it again through you. Promise to tell me about it as you go. Sure thing. Yeah. That is cool, sharing your passion with somebody else. But yeah, Nat. Did we ever find out? Hey, I'm Mr. Nuncreed. Gonna go see my dad in a bit. Did you want to come with? Even after everything I did, Mr. you'd Nuncreed still- Mr. Nuncreed shook his head. You really are your father's son, aren't you? Don't think I'm ready for that yet. Well, you're always invited. I bet he'd love to hear from you. I'll visit Walter in my own time. We run along now. Yeah, why are there five little bunnies? With perennial harvest I mean, gone, they're adorable. The transportation tubes were left unused. Come on, come on. No one is too big. No one is too small. For Jeff's well, ride. Maybe not completely unused. <laughs> Just one piece of candy for the ride of your life. Who's next? Okay, that explains the bunnies. Fair enough. And this is the bug guy. Guess what? Yesterday I saw a Dynastus Titus. That's good. It's great! I haven't spotted one of those in years. This rate, Beacon Pines is going to become the bug capital of the county. At least I cleaned up the um, goo. Back. 
I have news I think you'll enjoy. This morning I unpacked my last box. You officially moved in! That's just a box. Let's not blow this out of proportion. It sounds an awful lot like putting down roots. Guess I decided this place is root worthy. You're going to be stuck with me for the foreseeable future. I do have to warn you, most years aren't going to be as interesting as this. I think I'll manage. Ready? Before we go, there's a bit of a surprise. My mum's prepared this tree especially for you. I have to do that. Wasn't just then. Now the old town pitched in. We all love you. I should do okay in the cold of big old beacon pines. Thrive as things warm up. <laughs> because Cranny Love has moved the big tree and he wants to visit his dad's real grave, but there's no more tree. They made a tree for him! I'm crying. Perfect. When you're ready, take Jeff's wild ride to Old Beacon Pines. That's about the sweetest thing. And a really lovely way of saying thank you. <laughs> ah, you got it. That's a good looking tree. Brings being a special occasion and whatnot. It's rides on the house. You're gonna wanna hang on tight to that little tree. I think this is it. The end I've been waiting for. <laughs> Honestly, I began to lose hope of ever finding it. But then you came along. I... I don't know exactly how to thank you. It's hard to explain how much this means to me. It's funny, now that our time together is finally ending, I'm at a loss for words. Let's just watch the end together. Done. Good little tree. Bass little tree. Thank you, children. This means a lot. Yeah, thanks for everything. Shark saying you did what any super awesome bass buddy would have done. Probably should give you some time alone now. You good? Yeah, I am. It's been a wild year. How are you feeling? Ah, everyone keeps asking me that. <laughs> Fine, really. That always says the only thing fit than a fiddle is a cello. I feel like a dang chill. <laughs> well, if you stop feeling like a cello, I'm here for you. I know, you don't even have to see it. You two make an awesome pair. Excuse me? We're a trio now? Yeah. I... <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I was just one thing. You're gonna miss the end, Dan. It's literally ending. Can Milo not wait two minutes? <laughs> but also, have good walkies. There's no, there's just one thing missing now you're part of our group. Missing? Let me tell you a little story about a man named Hank Atomic. Oh, God. It won't be long. I'll be waiting for you back at the phone booth. I found the perfect way to start our summer. You've got some good friends. I'm so proud of you. Your father would be so proud. I know. Mum, can I ask you a question? Do you ever dream about Dad? Not a night goes by that I don't. I'm never afraid that you're going to forget him. Forget what he looked like, forget his voice. No, because so much of him lives on in you. He loved that old tree, but I know he would have loved this one. Because his two favourite people planted it. I'll give you two a moment. Hey, Dad. Dr. Mudwell says that over the next few years this place should warm up, so you won't have to be so cold for much longer. I think I finally understand why you left that night. There were things you believed in. Big things. Those beliefs were the things that made you you. 
And you wouldn't have stood up to Sharp. And if you, if you wouldn't have stood up to Sharp and stood up for what you believed in, you wouldn't have been the same person anymore. And you had to go. But that didn't mean you loved us any less. I might not visit you as much as I used to. I know you understand. Done in by a tree. Close the book. I hope I can reopen the book. <laughs> Let's do the credits. Okay, you can go on your walkies now. I think we'll end it there. I'm glad I started a little earlier. Um, I will finish the game. We have two achievements left. We have to leave the tap on or open the fridge door at the very, very beginning. On the shit route. Um, and also we have one more fish thing which involves getting cling And then I can get cling on that same route. Provided I can do that and then visit the sh shipping thing. You, instead of going to find Rolo at the library, you go down and talk to someone outside the museum. So I will do those off stream. I will just check at the end of the stream that you can just revisit the book. Though I think, well, I don't know whether it, um, is cumulative or you have to do it all in one playthrough if i have to restart i'm hoping i don't i'm hoping it'll let me just replay a little bit but we'll see but i will do those offline um in case i do have to replay a significant portion um but yeah so two achievements left but yeah, but you can whiz through the whole thing in like three hours if you're following a guide. Um, we've been playing about nine or ten, but I've been experiencing the whole thing. That was a really good story. Yeah, but the tree at the end just pushed me over the edge. <laughs> this was started by the looks of it. Um, so that's really cool. So that was some... Hiding Spot Games, the developer, published by Fellow Traveller. Love Fellow Traveller, they've published some great games. There we go. Um, and yeah, I received a copy of this game for promo purposes. However, it is... Yeah. So there we go. 
We've done every single root to 100%ness. So yeah, the ship root is here. We could probably nip in there and get cling, but as we need to redo that to, it's basically after shit before the hazardous hectoring. So it's before between these two flowers that you get the cling and at, we start at the beginning and turn on the tap and then we go up there basically and that will complete it all. But I will, as I said, I will do that off stream. That just gets me the last two. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna end here. my friend tomorrow I will do a short yeah I say short maybe an hour we'll be finishing off AI sometime late afternoon tomorrow late afternoon tomorrow I don't want to do an evening stream then we just figure out what Saturday is gonna look like because that's New Year's Eve shit and then there'll be some story time on the Sunday Probably finishing off Aquadine's mermaid story and drawing a line under that game. So that will be more games finished. But yeah. Who is that? I see Mr. Corners went on. I feel like we should go and see Mr. Corners. What on earth is Road of Death? Short is doing crafting. That looks gorgeous. I will go in and say hi. Um, okay, I have no idea what Road of Death is. Um, but Mr. Corners is streaming and has been on for about half an hour. So, in the interest of um, passing on, you know, the love to friends, let's go raid Mr. Corners. Um, right, so yeah, small stream tomorrow, Friday, just to finish off AI Somnian, um, Nirvana Initiative, um, because it was just a little bit late this morning, <laughs> there was just a little bit too much left, um, and yeah, I did get a good sleep, like eight hours, but yeah, so small stream tomorrow, then normal schedule will, will resume, 3 p.m. Saturday, something for New Year's Eve. Haven't decided whether it's just going to be a stream or we hang out in Discord chat or something. But I'll let you know if you're in the Discord. If you're not in the Discord, please join the Discord. Link is down below. Um, or if you're on uh, YouTube, angelusk.games has all my links. That is a URL. So yeah, let's go say hi to Mr. Corners. I've been Joe, otherwise known as Angel SK. Thank you very much for joining me in my journey through Beacon Pines. It's on Game Pass. Go play it. It's awesome. Bye.